call to order the meeting of the common allegiance and remain standing for an invocation offered by Alderman Weary. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. This is from President Harry Truman. He recorded this in his diary on August 15th, 1950. The prayer on this page has been said by me, Harry S. Truman, from high school as a window washer, bottle duster, floor scrubber in Independence, Missouri, drugstore as a timekeeper on the railroad contract gang, as an employee of a newspaper, as a bank clerk, as a farmer riding a gang plow behind four houses and mules, as a fraternity official learning to say nothing at all if good could not be said, as a public official judging, judging weaknesses and shortcomings, and as the President of the United States. O Almighty and everlasting God, creator of heaven, earth, and the universe, help me to be, to think, to act what is right, because it is right. Make me truthful, honest, and honorable in all things. Make me intellectually honest for the sake of right and honor and without thought of reward to me. Give me, give me the ability to be charitable, forgiving, and patient with my fellow men. Help me to understand their motives and their shortcomings, even as thou understandest mine. Amen. Thank you, Alder. On to approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Any corrections here? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. <coughs> the ayes have it. And the minutes of the August 2nd and August 16th council meetings have been approved. Approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Weary. Any changes here? Alder Eck? Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to move. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it on the agenda here. Um, Number 11, let's see, it's under O11. Uh, o if we could move that up to, um, let's see, after the appointments. Sorry, man. I don't. After the reappointments, if we could do that, that would be great. Okay, so just the maybe the entirety of the report? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So take up O after. I. Is your amendment? Yes, please. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been amended. Motion. Motion to approve as amended. Thank you, Alder Scannell. Second. Second. Second for that. Second by Alder Weary. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. You guys have it, and the agenda has been adopted as amended. Uh, report by the mayor, just a couple quick things, one related to the agenda, and then one sort of ceremonial. Um, obviously, we've got the report of the committee on the whole here on our ARPA discussions from the last time we were all together. I think it was a, a really good discussion, a good end product produced by our council, so just wanted to thank you all and members of the public for hanging with us for seven and a half hours. Uh, it was a lengthy meeting, but I think a really productive one, and, uh, and so hoping that we'll be able to endorse uh, the bulk of that, um, that report here tonight. And then, of course, as, as you all know, we've got Labor Day coming up on Monday, so I want to recognize all the working people that will be celebrating all the labor unions that have, uh, that have brought us so much good in this country. So as always, uh, there's a nice celebration out at Bay Beach. Um, the, uh, the Labor Council here in Green Bay puts that together and so we'll just extend an invitation to all members of council and members of the public. It's always a, a good time and a good way to celebrate. Um, so with that, I'll turn things over to council for announcements. Elder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the Reading Success Summit will take place on Wednesday, October 5th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Rush Expo. Kids who reach fourth grade without being able to read proficiently are more likely to struggle academically. 
In 20 to 2016, 2017, 41% of Brown County students were reading at a proficient level. With COVID and other factors, it's dropped down to 27%. I will send a link to this event to each of the alders and to the administration as well. Thank you. Great. Thanks for that note, Alder. Other announcements? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have three. Uh, the first is, uh, on a personal level, my, my daughter, Abby, who I know uh, many of you have met, is 16 years old today. So I would like to wish a happy sweet, sweet 16 to my daughter. Um, second one, uh, and actually these next two are agenda items that I, I, I don't think will be pulled, and so I thought, you know, I, I'd just make comments on them real quick now. The first is, I, I don't think we've talked about this enough. Kudos to Community and Economic Development. Um, I think Matt Buchanan in particular, when we did this shipyard groundbreaking, we talked about a couple of grants uh, that were awarded there. Two of them are on the council uh, agenda tonight. Uh, the combined total of those two, I believe, is right around $850,000. So again, those, you know, when those grants come in uh, to this organization, that means it's less funding that has to come from our local taxpayers. So uh, Matt and, and the, the project team over there have done a phenomenal job with securing millions and millions of dollars for that project. So uh, congrats to you for that. The second one, and, and we talked about this at Finance Committee, we had our audit, our annual audit, and just three numbers that really struck out to me that I think are worth pulling out and just, uh, again, commending staff and the mayor uh, uh, for really getting this done. First off, we ended the year with net income of $1.48 million, which was a variance of $1.89 million. That means uh, we were actually able to uh, contribute to um, uh, the fund balance? The fund balance, yes, thank you, Mayor. So the fund balance. So uh, any concerns sometimes that we have about how that number fluctuates up and down every year, uh, that put us in a really good position with our fund balance despite very difficult circumstances. The second thing is that we reduced our debt limit from 47% to 43%, uh, putting the city of Green Bay seventh amongst the, t amongst the tenth largest cities. And the lower you go, the better you are. So seventh is a really great place considering that we are the third largest city. Uh, and then the other one was reducing our debt service to non-capital expenditures by three and a half percent, which put us at 16 percent. Uh, and our bond rating agency has recommended that we be at 20 percent. So we are a full four percent below uh, what our bond rating agency recommends. And so I think, again, I, uh, that's obviously a very strong team effort. So I'd like to commend uh, the entire city staff for the hard work that you've done uh, to put us in a good financial position uh, year-end 21. Well said, Alder. <laughs> Thank you, Alder, and happy birthday to Abby. Uh, question, or, uh, other announcements from Council? Seeing none, we will move along to appointments. Entertain a motion on new appointments. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell, and that is to approve our new appointments. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to reappointments. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Comments here. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and then reappointment has been made. Now on to, because of the amendment, on to the report of the Protection and Policy Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately. Was it 11? 11, any others? Seeing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved with the exception of item 11, which was pulled by Alder Eck. Okay. Um, yes, I, I, I pulled it. I just know that I've been contacted. There's quite a few people that are here to speak on it, so I wanted to go ahead and open the floor if we could. All right. Make a motion to open the floor, please. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Eck to open the floor, seconded by Alder Johnson. Uh, it should be limited, limited to the item. Um, so with that, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Uh, and just to Alder Scandal's point, um, the item is to refer to staff to create a flag policy following federal guidelines and the federal flag code. This is in response to a communication by Alder Weary, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just a reminder for folks to keep their comments to the item at hand. 
and state your name and address and keep your comments to three minutes. So with that, um, I do have one up here for Sandy Duckett. Good evening, my name is Sandy Duckett. I live at 2552 Wilder Court. And I come before you as a former director of economic development for the city of Green Bay. I bring that up as a point of interest um, because um, I'm glad that you are looking at a policy that looks at both the federal, um, using the federal guidelines and only allowing the United States flag, the state of Wisconsin flag, and the Green Bay flag to be flown at um, the city of Green Bay. We can't allow special interest to have a position at City Hall. When I worked here in the 90s, you never, know, you never knew who was a Democrat or Republican <laughs> or any position that they held. We were here to represent all members of our fine city, and I hope that you will continue to uphold using those three flags um, for the city of Green Bay. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, next is Angela Burkle. Yeah, oh, my apologies. Uh, next person is Kimber Rowan. Kimber Rollin, 115 East Walnut, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54124. I've already spoken once on this uh, policy that is uh, being looked at, and so this will seem a little redundant to what uh, was just stated, but I would ask that the city council follow the guidelines located in the federal flag code and that the city-owned flagpoles shall only fly the United States state of Wisconsin, and Green Bay City flags. Please vote in favor of Chris Weary's request. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have, it looks like Kevin Burkle. Kevin Burkle, 1007 Tony Gannadale Run, Green Bay. <laughs> Um, I would just like to say, um, you know, we spend a lot of time on things like this where we could be navigating our powers and what have you to um, deal with the things that we really need to deal with. Um, and it goes, you know, from here to there. I mean, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Um, what, what I do and I, the way I look at things is that um, I do a lot of fundraising, I do a lot of donations, and um, I don't necessarily take a side to any of this. We're all human beings, we all live in this country, and what's happening is we're turning in things into policies of political issues that don't belong. Instead of focusing on the things we need to focus on, let's focus on the things we need to focus on instead of you know, worrying about the things that we shouldn't be worrying about. The flag should be flown, the three flags like everybody's talking about. Um, there's other ways to address your thoughts and issues, but let's focus on things that we really need to focus on. Let's keep our, our kids safe. Let's keep our schools safe. Let's do the things we need to do to keep things in order versus, you know, this is such a waste of everybody's time for such piddly things. We've got a lot of bad stuff going on in this country right now, and politics is taking over on all this stuff, and it's wrong. The government and people that are work for the government are supposed to serve the people and their needs, and that's not happening anymore. So let's try and focus on that. You know, follow the way, do the things we should need to do, and um, I think we'll all come out a lot better in the long run. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have Steve Graham. Okay, I gotta confess, I'm from Ashwaubenon, uh, but I work in Green Bay, and my address is 2372 Keyway, by the way. 
Um, I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. I, um, uh, my, my honor to have done that. Um, I miss the time when I could go to a Packer game and sit with Democrats and Republicans without any kind of a conflict, where we could be together and enjoy a sport. Um, and just, uh, I, I could even get along with Bears fans at times. Um, but um, unfortunately, like the gentleman said, the political agendas that are going on nowadays are just dividing the country ever more. And that shouldn't <coughs> happen with a flag. Uh, we need to just vote for the United States flag, Wisconsin flag, and the city of Green Bay flag. That's all we need. Anything else is promoting a political <laughs> social agenda and shouldn't be none. All right, thanks, sir. <laughs> Next is Deborah Lynn. Deborah Lynn. Good evening, and thank you for having me. My name is Deborah Lynn, and I'm at 151 Hoffman Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. What is going on is racist and sexist. Racist and sexist. What is going on here? Um, and why is promoting half of 1% of our population over the common people? Hmm? One half of one percent of the common people of our population. The other thing that we need to do so that we can get things up and running is to um, get our precincts back because once we have our precincts back, we won't have to keep voting for the same people to get in because all they do is go up the ladder and we make no progress at all. Thank you for listening. You bet. Next is Tanya Metoxin. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Tanya Metoxin, 2460 West Point Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54304. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for this opportunity. Thank you for every, each and every individual that is here and all the aldermen that's in the house today. I come to speak on the behalf of uh, <clears throat> the flag policy in regards to, uh, I'm from Oneida Nation. I grew up in a military family. And I actually didn't think I'd ever have to come to a situation where I'd have to speak on this. But um, I'm neither Republican or Democrat. I love God, and I believe in love, unity, and faith. And it's time that we come together and focus on other things like that young gentleman said. One nation under God, our flag, that's number one. God number one in our flag. Number two, state of Wisconsin and Green Bay city flags represent everyone. It shouldn't be a certain label for this one or that one. I don't agree with that at all, only because then I'm from Oneida, so should we have Oneida flag, Menominee flag, First Nations, all flag, Native Americans, Navajos, they're all here in Green Bay. They're all here. The veterans, uh, Biden flag, Trump flag, are we gonna put all them on the poll? We won't have no poll. So let's just make it simple and sweet. And this is not racist at all, and this is not hate because I love God and God loves all. It's about love, unity, and faith. One nation under God, our flag, number one. And keep the rest of Green Bay and Wisconsin represents all. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Next we have Guy Zima. I kind of miss this and I kind of don't miss it. 
I got to do some, I could do some duty here. Turn my phone off. You can take it if you need to. I, I, I have to tell you though, I, I didn't have one until about four or five years ago, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Your address, sir? Anyway, I, I, my, my address is 1121 12th Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Good. And I, I have to tell you, if you folks have to struggle with this one, I don't know what you're going to do when you have a real problem. I mean, this is no brainer of no brainers. And, you know, we don't prevent anybody from celebrating whatever they want to celebrate, but in their own communities. As a previous speaker, by the way, that was eloquent, eloquent. Thank you so much. But uh, we're here to do the people's business. And like I say, I don't really miss it because I thought, oh, would I have to sit through this and boil my head off it, that there's people that would want it any, any differently. So anyway, I think you all got common sense. I mean, if we got to talk over this no-brainer, then I, I don't know. I, I think we're in real trouble. But I think you're all going in the right direction, so I don't want to say any more. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Gary Metoxen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> and all, all the persons that are here. I'm retired from the United States Navy. <laughs> 23 years, and I lived in this community my first um, 20 years. And I'm living at 2460 West Point Road with, with my daughter at the moment. And I, I think she, she said it all. And I looked at this again, you've got a lot of items on here. That shouldn't even be an item to flag policy. I've been in every state in the union. I've been in, and I traveled to 12 countries. Man, this is kind of disrespectful to our flag. And I have never seen it. Why is this even a policy? I don't know who made that decision, <clears throat> but it was made and it should be over with. And like she said, how many flags can you put on there? One other nation would probably really like that flag there too. <clears throat> they support this community. They got a night of football gate. I mean, they do support this community. But I don't think they're going to support. <clears throat> I would recommend they don't even talk about putting a flag uh, on Green Bay City Hall. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure serving this country. And I served it 23 years straight. Uh, and I've been back and forth to Green Bay, and let's not let's work with the agenda. All the items you got on that, I would suggest that we we work on the important items, just like my friend Guy Zimmer said, <laughs> and let's let's do the right thing. I don't know who can vote against that new policy or maybe the only policy. So anyway, Mr. Mayor, thanks for your time. Thanks for the invite. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. All the persons. <laughs> Next we have Lynn Austin. Lynn Austin, 1449 Morrow Street in Green Bay. And I just wanted to make a special trip down here to say, please do not do more government overreach. We don't need you know, our local government to be trying to push you know, different cultural agendas like social engineering. Kids have a really tough time in our schools as it is. They don't need people trying to influence them in a certain direction. We have a lot of vices that impact our city. We should never push any of those, whether it's gambling or drugs or drinking or perversions, pornography, any of that stuff. Kids have it so rough already 
here, please just stick with what you were elected to do, stick with the government, and don't be pushing these social agendas. You know, it really isn't helpful. So please just stick with, you know, we're all Americans, <laughs> stick with the United States, you know, our county, our city, our state, just not these other, you know, fringe agendas. Thank you. Do you have that is our, our last slip. Do we have any others who'd like to speak before we close the floor? Any others who'd like to speak before we close the floor? Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Campbell. All in favor aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You don't need to make it when the floor is open, but Alder Burnett, go ahead. Yeah, uh, there, is a, there is a member of the public who wanted to attend the meeting but could not. So I guess, do you mind if I read her comment or how do you propose I do that? Sure. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Young, Kum, uh, Young Graham. She spoke at the meeting a couple months ago. I forget how to pronounce her name, but she lives at 2061 Silver Court, Green Bay. I strongly oppose adding any ceremonial flags on any of the city properties, both indoors and outdoors. For any kind of ceremonial flag, it represents only a small percentage of Green Bay residents, whether it is the pride flag or any other flags. When we favor a certain group of community people, we are starting to discriminate against other groups of residents who live in the same community, and it will create divisions and animosity amongst diverse community members. Do we? want to create the kind of environment that can cause a lot more harm than good. Instead of creating divisions, don't we need to work toward unity? Only common ground we have as American and Green Bay citizens is the American flag under God as the founders intended and state and city flags. Thank you. That was her comment. All right. Thanks, Alder. <laughs> other, other comments from council on the item? Uh, Alder Stoyer and then Alder Weary. Thank you, Your Honor. I mean, like the agenda item says, we're referring it back to staff. But, um, you know, depending on what the staff looks at, I mean, I, I feel personally that we should keep it to three flags. So I am just wanted to state that for the record. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate everyone who, who came here tonight to speak on this. Um, I, I reached out to the people of my district with the, you know, the limited amount that I can at least, and I, I did get back 124 responses, and of those 116, or 93%, uh, strongly favored having the, just the three flags, federal, state, and, and city. So it was vastly overwhelming. Former Alderman Zima uh, stated it best, this is, a, this is an easy one. Let's keep things fair and honest and straightforward. We can all unify under the federal, state, and city flag and not be fighting about what else should be flying up there. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. So, a, a question maybe for Alder Stevens, since he's the chair of the committee. The motion is a little confused um, or conflicting with the communication in the sense that it talks about <clears throat> uh, creating policy following federal guidelines and federal flag code. So I was curious if that is, if that's the motion. If you want. Okay. So that's the motion by, well, that was approved by the committee to follow the federal flag code. Okay. Because that doesn't speak to three flags. Alder Stevens. The request was it to bring it to staff, have them look at the federal code, then bring it back to us for further discussion. Okay. Okay. So that's the motion. Uh, Alder Burnett on that? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I think it, I think we could basically refer to staff to follow federal flag policy, but also add the provision that only that it is the intent that only three flags fly on all city flag poles. And that would be the state, federal, and city flag. So I'd like to amend that motion. Is that possible? Motion has been made to amend, uh, made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Weary, uh, to make it clear that only those three flags as designated would be allowed to be flown. Yeah. Uh, comments on that motion, on that amendment? 
Alderac? Um, I, I just feel like we could make it simple. I know that Alder Weary, his original intent was for it to be Wisconsin, or um, the U.S. flag, the Wisconsin flag, and the city flag on any um, city flag poles. And so I, I would prefer that it stay simple, just like he originally intended it, and not even add the, that's just my two cents on that, to not even have to add that extra um, based on federal. Because it gets complicated from what I looked up. Okay. Any other comments on the amendment? Alder Johnson? Um, yeah, and, it, and you know, generally speaking, I think, you know, I, I hate to disappoint anybody tonight, but we're not actually voting on anything. Um, we're, we're voting on whether or not to refer this to staff to craft a policy that we can actually talk about. So, really, uh, I, I mean, I, I, the amendment. I don't mind it. Uh, the motion, I don't mind it. Let's get us something in writing that we can get in front of us uh, that we can talk about. There is one maybe addition that, that I would perhaps uh, bring up, and I had this conversation with Alder Burnett and the mayor the other day. Um, in, in I, right now, if I'm not mistaken, we only have one flagpole uh, in front of City Hall. And of course, I, I was looking, as we were talking here, I was looking up the flag code, and it's you know about as complex as anything that the federal government can pass. And, and I think, um, you know, for at least as part of that motion to have staff contemplate and bring forward any proposals that might include what, is, what does it look like when you have a second or a third flight pole? You know, do you fly them on separate? Do you combine them on one pole uh, all underneath each other? The code kind of defines how that works, but I'd at least welcome, you know, what, what does that look like if we, we add additional poles to have them be independent? Thanks, Alder. Is that an amendment to the amendment? No, I'm not going to offer it up as an okay. amendment. I, I just I, I, I just wanted to convey it that I think staff ought to do that and, and tell us what that looks like. Okay. Fair enough. Any other comments on the amendment? Alder Eck for a second time. I did know that I see Alder Hutchinson is in the queue. Oh, thank you. And myself, but I'll, he's first. Yeah. Alder Hutchinson, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was the one who wanted to table this um, because last month, was uh, LGBTQ plus month, and it seemed a slap in the face of those people. I was in favor of looking at it using a one flag, one pole policy. Um, I'm not really against that at all, but I wanted to step it back. And one, th one fact that was thrown out tonight, which isn't accurate, is about 7% of the United States citizens are LGBTQ plus. And if you look at the adults in the United States married, 10% are, uh, are gay, okay? So let's not minimize this by saying it's really a small number. It's it's smaller number, but not that small, okay? That's why I wanted to push it back, okay? Um, so I'm okay with the amendment as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder Eck? Um, well, I, that's why, you know, I did look up the federal policy, which is why I said let's go back and make it more simple because I'll, uh, suddenly you're adding all these um, polls. I don't want that to be, I guess I look at it as a loophole um, for future um, other flags, and I would like to keep it simple and one, one poll with those three flags. Okay. Thanks, Alder. <laughs> Any other... Any other comments on the amendment? Alder Scannell? Yeah, just a quick one. I think it was a slap in the face last month, and I think it's a slap in the face this month or any other month. I don't think the month matters. So I will not be supporting this in any size, shape, or form. Uh, we can talk about that once we get further down the line. But uh, And as far as three polls, I wouldn't support that simply because I wouldn't want to put any expense into this item. So, but if we had three flags, fine, fine, but we don't, and I wouldn't want to put any money into it. So that's why I wouldn't uh, go along with that. Thank right. you. Thank you, Alder. Right. Alder Campbell. Yes, last month, I hate to be repeated, but it just so happened our council meeting ended up two days before July, the 4th of July, the Declaration of Our Independence I thought I gave a, a very patriotic spe speech about the American flag and the founders of our country that said it clear. I don't know why we keep trying to screw with this, 
I will not be supporting any more flagpoles or and any special interest flags being flown. I said it eloquently that day. It just so happened it fell between June. People celebrated under the pride flag, and I'll repeat, we all stand under the American flag, and God we trust. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of a response to Alder Scandal. I don't want this to be a slap in the face because ultimately this flag policy isn't just about that flag. It's about any future flags going up as well. So if we control it now, it's not gonna open a can of worms for the future. So this isn't just for this flag. And I don't want people to think that way. If a different flag would have won up, I would have supported this as well. So I want people to be clear on that. All right, thank you, Alder. So we have all the weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would urge everyone who's here tonight or who's interested in this, you know, listening or will tune in later, that this will be going to committee the next week. Who's the chair? Elder Stevens, is that next week? Well, it's going to staff. They're going to staff and they'll come back to committee. So uh, watch for it to come back to committee because it will be coming back there and to council and I'm sure we'll have a spirited debate when it does come back. Um, it really is about opening Pandora's box. Once you allow one, as we saw in the city of Boston, they, they flew all kinds of flags, and, and a Christian group said, hey, why don't you fly our flag? They were told no. They went all the way to the Supreme Court and lost, and so they have to fly that flag now too. So unless we want hundreds and hundreds of different flags, uh, we shouldn't go down this path because that's where it's going to lead. And, and we really should just unify under those three flags. It's very simple. Keep the, the social commentary, political commentary elsewhere. Thank you. Thanks, all. We do have an amendment. We have an amendment on the floor with a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Do you guys have it? The amendment is approved or adopted, rather. Motion to approve is amended, made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Weary. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The aye. ayes have it. That item has been approved. On to, back to um, ordinance of second reading for adoption. Oh, no. Excuse me. Thank you, clerk. We have a presentation offered by Ms. Schmitz and a few other folks, I imagine. Mike. <laughs> I'm trying to find the bottom right. Oh, no, 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 up, up, up. <laughs> Just up from there. No, I don't think so. So, hang on a sec. I went to New Share. <laughs> colder, colder. <laughs> and then where's and then just go right now? Yep. Look the one all different. And then just hit the up and down key. Why isn't it working? And what just is the up and down. Yeah. I guess. Okay. All right. All right. Floor is yours. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Melissa Schmitz, Resiliency Coordinator for our City of Green Bay. And I'm joined here by two um, people from the East River Resiliency Collaborative. And we're going to talk about some of the initiatives that we've been, that I've been working on in collaboration with the East River Collaborative over the last 
year to year and a half, and some other initiatives also um, to increase flood resiliency in the city of Green Bay. Okay, and I'm gonna introduce Kayla. <laughs> I'll introduce myself. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Kayla Wansnyder. I'm the East River Community Resilience Coordinator for the East River Collaborative. Um, and I just want to kind of um, tell you what this East River Collaborative is about. So uh, we're working on the watershed scale, which is um, along the East River. Uh, there are uh, about 13 communities that intersect the watershed, which is just kind of the river basin. Um, if you don't know what a watershed is, any water that falls on this piece of land all flows out into the East River. Um, and so we've been working on this watershed scale and based on a lot of our stakeholder feedback, we have formed the collaborative around these five focus areas here. Cross-boundary collaboration, we really wanna be able to break down silos between these municipalities to allow for communication um, and better collaboration. Uh, sharing resources and knowledge, expertise, uh, building communi community capacity, all of the information and all of the workshops that we and outreach that we're doing is all community based. So any plans that and uh, frameworks that we're making, um, communities really are able to see themselves. Um, data informed decision making. So we really want to be able to ground truth all of these maps. Um, we've done some flood modeling, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so it's really uh, steeped in the data that we've collected across the region. Um, it's important that we include the vul flood vulnerable and underrepresented residents in the region because a lot of times these people are left out of the conversation and it's really important that we bring <coughs> these people's perspectives to the table. And then lastly, um, we want to be able to encourage the implementation of nature-based solutions because it's not just about, um, it's about flooding, but it's, uh, it, it goes wider than that. There are a lot of co-benefits, improving water quality and quality of life as well. Um, so this collaborative is a partnership between uh, the Nature Conservancy, who I work for, um, the Wisconsin Sea Grant, and Juliet works for, um, New Water um, and UW Madison Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. So, in your uh, packets, you should have two maps. Um, this first one, based on some flood modeling that we've done, we are able to look at the impacts of flooding the one year flood with high lake levels and low lake levels. So in this one you can see the red is with a one year rainfall with high lake levels, blue is one year rainfall with low lake, lo low lake levels, and the impact of the flooding goes all the way up to Highway G, and kind of beyond that you see very, very, very minimal impact from the flooding. Um, so we've created this these maps um, with a UW cartography lab, um, and I think they're really great visuals, um, and they allow you to really see what's happening on the landscape very well. And so then um, this next one here is um, some more uh, visuals of the flooding in the region. The red is the one-year flood. Um, the yellow um, dissipates into the 500-year flood. Um, and so this map you're, you're seeing here is the intersection of the east river watershed on top of Green Bay. And so it's kind of just zoomed into this um, kind of municipal area here. And so then the last thing I want to mention is this, um, these watershed community resilience assessments that we've been doing. We, um, we're gonna be talking about the results from Green Bay, but we've also worked with um, six other communities across the region, including Brown County. So I guess that would be um, eight total. Um, this chart that you're looking at is the number of communities that experience different flood hazards. So there are three communities um, of the seven that experience riverine flooding at a high level, one at a moderate level, and three at a low level. And so this kind of shows the, the impact of flooding um, across the watershed. So riverine flood plating is the um, the most significant um, groundwater rising, rising groundwater and storm sewer backups um, are kind of on the lower end here. So um, 
I will now transition into um, Green Bay and some of the results that we've gotten from the workshops. Great, good evening. My name is Julia Nordyke. I work for the University of Wisconsin Sea Grant Institute. And um, I had the pleasure, along with uh, the Nature Conservancy and the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program, and then Melissa's office uh, with the Sustainability Coordinator to help host um, uh, the citywide flood assessment. So we knew that you know, the city of Green Bay didn't want to just focus on the East River. We knew that was a problem, but we expanded it to be more um, of a, the citywide. Uh, and so we, there was, the main point was really to identify opportunities to increase flood resiliency. And we did this in three steps with staff. So <clears throat> throughout this process, it was a months long process and we had three steps and more than 20 staff staff from seven different departments uh, participated in this. So it was an amazing um, experience to have different perspectives and expertise come from different departments. Uh, and, um, and one of the things that did, um, I think Melissa was gonna mention, but uh, Brennan Rode from the, GI who's the GIS, the city's GIS tech, he actually created this map so that we could uh, in real time during our workshops capture the staff input and where the hazards are. So there is a link to this map that you can explore some of the hazards and what kind of community impacts. So the first workshop really focused on what locations in these d four different geographic areas of the city um, were had experienced flood hazards and all those different types of flood hazards that you saw earlier along with uh, the different types of community impacts. So were there socioeconomic impacts? Were there impacts to transit or transportation systems? Um, were there public health concerns? How about infrastructure or water or storm sewer utilities that were at risk? So um, that was something, did you wanna mention anything else about the map? No, I just want, well, yeah. I, I just wanted to point out that all the purple dots, and I apologize if anyone is colorblind in the audience, in advance, okay? But the purple dots um, indicate all of the hazards that staff identified during the workshop. Um, Julie is gonna go into some more of the methodology of this. Um, all of the yellow triangles that you're seeing, the, this is a layer in our GIS system. It's actually the county's GIS system that, and we use this in our GIS mapping as well. But all of those yellow triangles are um, identified as uh, places where there's chemical storage or chemical use in the region. This is uh, actually an, a national, you know, this is a requirement that has to be disclosed and that way when we do experience emergencies, whether it's a flood emergency or a different type of um, disaster, we know where these locations are because that can obviously increase our, um, our vulnerability to, um, to another type of hazard. So um, the map is interactive. Um, and Brennan and our other GIS anal analyst um, designed this map. It's very, um, we hope to make this usable to, for the public in the future to be able to identify other areas in the city. Um, that's, we're not quite there yet, but at this point, this was um, just, a, I wanna just reiterate <laughs> the amount of knowledge and expertise that went into these workshops. Um, it was public works, it was community and economic development, fire, police, um, parks. transit, parks, rec, and forestry. Um, I know I'm missing some others, but we had a very wide array of, um, of um, perspectives for the workshops, so. Yes, yeah, so we encourage you, go ahead. Just as a quick question, there, there is a legend in that. Yes, if you, that's what I was just gonna say, actually. If you explore the map online, you should, mm -hmm. it should be able to pop up a legend. Sure. So I'm sure you can guess what the little fire truck <laughs> icon means. Um, I think, yeah. uh, but uh, there's the hospitals, there's, there, there, uh, what many of these things are are called critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so schools, uh, stuff like that, so, um, and yeah. No, yeah. schools and daycares are the little black flags that you see. Yeah. Um, every police department, police um, community, community policing center is listed on there as well. Um, this is all important because in an event where we have a major flood event or even if it's a localized flooding event, we wanna know which infrastructures could be impacted, including our electrical substations and all of those important um, pieces of our city. 
So this was the first workshop that we held, uh, which was fabulous using uh, Brennan's, uh, this is very unique and I would, uh, you should definitely be proud of the GIS department for helping build this tool for your city to help plan. Uh, the second step was a quite a lengthy comprehensive questionnaire that had a lot of different types of flood resilient actions. Uh, many, uh, several departments filled it out as like a department. It covered community planning, emergency management, public awareness and education. Um, and then for the third, we compiled all that information together. And then in the third workshop, staff worked to prioritize geographic areas um, in these four geographic areas, zones, like specific areas, and then also um, prioritize the types of resilient actions that the city uh, could take or that staff thought would help actually build flood resiliency. So, um, so the first area that we worked on is the Beaver Dam and Duck Creek area on the west side of the city. Um, and so you should have in your packet um, an assessment summary memo that kind of goes through this. Uh, but there's the Beaver, so the top spot was Beaver uh, Dam Park. Um, there's a lot of high groundwater issues there. It's a, it's a wet, very wet area, probably a lot of wetlands there before, some discharge issues um, and ponding. You have the Beaver Dam Creek in general where the residential areas and some of the issues with um, the, the riverine and flash flooding in times of heavy floods, uh, Shano and Military Avenue, and then Country Cub Road. Um, and some of the community impacts, so like at Country Club Road, uh, there's, it's very downhilly, so there's flash flooding that kind of happens downhill, and then it can actually impact the road below and ha cause road closures during Im impassable roads in general. Uh, Shano and Military Avenue is um, a lot of storm sewer uh, capacity issues, but it does recede quickly, but it is quite disruptive to businesses. Uh, one thing I just wanted to point out, the, so the oh, five yeah. that you're seeing on each of these next four screens, the city was divided into four geographic areas. These are just the top five. This doesn't mean that these are the only hazards that were identified. These are just the ones that we sort of boiled down to the top five priority areas identified by, by our staff. Yeah, and so the, the red is number one, and they kind of outlined it on the map uh, of what those there's, and then blue is the second one, so. Um, okay. Uh, the second area that uh, geographic area we focused on was the Fox River and the Western Slough area. So the Western Slough is around Shano Avenue, Shano Avenue uh, Fire Station Number Three. It should be noted that, so uh, historically, this is an area where like they put Fort Howard because it was the highest spot in the city, and the slough itself used to be like a waterway, so it was influenced coastally. And uh, and so over time, we've we've developed that area and filled it in and. And so there, it, the water kind of wants to stay in that area and go in there and doesn't want to really come out. So it's quite a large area that's impacted by flooding. Uh, it impacts the high school over there, roads, infrastructure, our fire station, and so forth like that. So that was, that was definitely a, a major concern. Oh. I'm going to try. That's better. Thank you. Uh, West Maith Mason Street and South Oneida Street. Uh, we have nuisance street flooding. DPW has done studied this area extensively um, uh, in general and has several solutions lined up for that area. Uh, the Fox River at Crick Street, so on the other side of the river, on the east side of the river. You have uh, near the East River Trail, there's some restaurant flooding, uh, some piers that have been washed away, and a lot of coastal coastal flooding there. Again, the Fox River Trail at South Adams Street and Law Street, coastal drainage dish issues. Um, the Fox River Trail is very much impacted at that area. And so are the streets. Too. And so are the streets. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, Colburn Park at the no north end, back on the west side there, uh, was also has some ponding issues and flashiness in general and storm sewer, um, storm sewer issues. Moving on to a larger area, the coastal, kind of coastal zone of, of Green Bay. Um, down near Bay Beach, the Metro Boat la Launch area was rated the highest priority in terms of flooding. Uh, there, at one point, the US Coast Guard station was completely flooded. I think that has been a little bit resolved, but there's a lot of coastal flooding there in generally, and it's really does, it, that flooding there um, moderately impacts um, that area. 
Uh, same, the same type of flooding occurs at the Bay Beach Amusement Park. Uh, having a very large, can potentially have a large impact for our, our parks, mm -hmm. parks department. And one of the other reasons why that was identified as a high priority area, besides the damage that can happen to the parks, is that it's just a heavily utilized area by our people, by the people of Green Bay and the greater community. So the more um, people you have in a, in a, in a hazard-prone area, it's, it should rise to the top for, from a priority standpoint. East Shore Drive was also rated moderately high. Uh, there's several properties that have been flooded out, critical roadways that have been closed. Um, it does put a strain on emergency response uh, due to coastal flooding at times. Um, and then uh, another an, an interesting area that was identified is the transit center near Quincy to Webster Avenue. Uh, so this was moderately impact. There is, it is near, there's a fire station on the fringe that should be noted. Uh, there's some storm sewer capacity flash flooding, ponding in general. So that that could be a concern in terms of uh, yeah. critical transportation. And services. there's an evacuation route, I believe, identified in that area too near University Avenue. So that's another reason why that was identified as a priority. So, okay. And then uh, Beach Lane was also identified, which is um, up on the north end of Nicolay Drive, uh, off of Nicolay Drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, near, there's, but but there that there's a fix. there has there's a been fix in the works there right and it impacts um, a smaller amount of residents mm -hmm. up there okay. okay and then oh sorry oh, oh. yes Alder Campbell <laughs> thank you uh, on the East Shore coastal thing was this study done after the dike was put in. This, the workshop was done after the dike was raised, and I almost mentioned that the dike has been raised, <laughs> but I, I just, I didn't want to speak totally for public works and right, all the things right. that I mean, worked, obviously but. that was is a, that a what major you meant project. By, that was a major project, and so yeah. That, this is that what you meant by kind of fixed? No, the one on Beach Lane, there's some oh. uh, drainage yeah. ditch improvements. That, that been, was a different, a okay. different project. Yeah, um, the dike uh, was from was raised, I believe, mm -hmm. maintained and raised. Uh, it was put in, in after the 70s, 1972 flood, um, and uh, so it is definitely higher. Uh, but there is definitely still at high lake levels could be a potential for water potentially to go over the dike at some point again. So you don't know, <laughs> but that was that did that was a major piece of infrastructure that has has uh, helped protect those properties there. Um, okay, and then the last, but definitely one of the more focused areas was the, is the east. Um, we're calling just the East River section. Um, so uh, some of this, so that number one and two, I would just say that they're both equal, even though one says one right. and one says two. They're ba they're basically rated for the exact same flooding issues. A lot of riverine flooding issues, high lake levels, and with a north wind that pushes the water down up the river definitely impacts that area also. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of housing during that, the major flood event during 2019, you know, you had 38 condemned houses and a lot of public health impacts potentially because of mold and evacuation services and so forth like that. So that that is a major area of con number one priority concerned. Um, I would say I'm just going to jump really quick to number four, which is the yellow one, because that's the Baird Creek Trail. It's in the same area, um, and it's right at the, that's the mouth of Baird Creek to the East River. It affects the, potentially the Riverside Ballroom, there's Sullivan Park. It does impact trail access mm -hmm. for students to um, access their school at times. So um, that, I think that whole area can be kind of considered its own corridor in general. Mm -hmm. um, you have East Mason Street at Main Street and Lancome Road. Uh, and there is a lot of storm sewer capacity. We've talked a lot about having hard impervious surfaces in that area, flash flooding, uh, moderate to high community impacts. There have been, unfortunately, um, some rescues that have had to happen from people's cars being flooded out. Uh, there are uh, severe business impacts to the businesses in that area. And, and then, um, 
And then Van Beek Road, <laughs> east of Manitowoc Road, is uh, kind of a unique one. Uh, there's some uh, building flooding issues and then also some transportation systems. I will also note uh, for this section, too, that the Baird Creek Parkway, uh, there, were, there was identified as having severe erosion, stream bank and erosion issues. Um, also that I believe that there's a lot of interest in helping work on those in the future. But it, in terms of the flood hazard impacts, it didn't. Um, it wasn't prioritized at the top. Okay. Anything else for this one? Oh, no. no, I think we're kind of starting to go over our time limit here. Yeah. So um, after all the, the areas were identified as the priority locations, then in the next workshop, staff started talking about what sort of actions we could take as a city and as a community to start addressing, not just start, because there's a lot of stuff already happening. Uh, but priority actions that we could take to increase our flood resilience. And there were three main categories that all of the recommendations and actions fell into. One was planning and policy, one were infrastructure actions, and then disaster preparation and response. The full summary is in your packet, so I'm not going to go through line by line. But some of the main themes that emerged from our discussions were the need to incorporate up-to-date climate data, and future projections into our planning and design, whether that's for storm sewer design or whether that's for um, advanced flood warning systems. It, it, there's, there's a range of how we could utilize up-to-date climate data in, in our planning. Um, also, um, the, the interest of increasing the use of green stormwater infrastructure as a tool for flood mitigation and increasing resiliency. Um, for example, one, one idea, one action would be to incentivize green infrastructure in development and redevelopment projects. Um, I'm, I'm doing a high level summary. So if you have any questions after this is over, please get in touch with me. Um, and then also lastly, planning as it relates to our emergency response and our chain of command needs to constantly be revisited and reviewed by staff and also a suggestion to do mock flood scenario training. And then some of the other, you know, this, these are the next three things I'm going to talk briefly about. Um, this is separate from the East River Collaborative um, stormwater infrastructure plan. So a few months ago at a council meeting, we were given the directive to, de to develop a comprehensive citywide green infrastructure plan. So uh, Public Works has been working on creating an RFP for that. We're not quite ready to launch that yet, but we've been identifying our goal, the goals that could go into a green infrastructure, a citywide plan. Um, so I'm feverishly working on that. Um, the East River Corridor flood planning, um, myself along with um, a couple of representatives from Economic Development and from the Parks Department are working with the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Um, this, is, this initiative works with Great Lakes communities. And um, so what they're doing is helping us identify funding sources for East River resiliency to be able to implement projects. And lastly, Brown County is starting to um, work on a, I'm gonna get this name right, um, Coastal Flooding Pre-Disaster Mitigation Plan. So that's the Brown County Planning Commission that's, that's starting that process. I reached out to them to let them know that Green Bay is very interested in being at the table for those planning discussions so that we can be involved and collaborate with them and that should be starting in the, next, in the coming months. So, uh, some additional clap since we started the East River Collaborative. There's been a lot of energy and some other groups who have come to help and provide some capacity and resources to the city. And, uh, and so, a couple of them, my the, the UWC grant who I work for, they received a grant to work with communities in Northeast Wisconsin on disaster preparedness and vul social vulnerability mapping uh, through some games. Uh, and then there's also, we also formed a partnership with the U.S. Army Corps Silver Jackets program, which is focused on flooding. Uh, they provide uh, technical capacity and for flood services to communities, and they're helping over the next couple of years, they're, they have committed to helping develop an East River a warning system along with Brown County Emergency Management um, and uh, US, the US Geological Survey, and then also the National Weather Service. 
And also they are help, going to help do some tabletop exercises uh, with the East River communities, including the city of Green Bay on flood preparedness. So looking at the plans, seeing who has roles, you know, where's the call list and who's doing what, and really helping us think through um, how to be more prepared for those. And then, so lastly, um, additional East River collaborative initiatives. Um, our next steps are going to be creating this community-driven decision support tool, which um, expands the flood modeling that we've done and really tries to identify different locations for um, flood mitigation opportunities. An interactive map, which allows you to um, add, subtract data, and um, kind of create your own maps of the region an East River Watershed um, Flood Resilience Implementation Plan, um, which will connect um, communities to projects, to funding and resources and expertise along the, um, along the watershed. We have been working with um, a few different communities to do these native pollinator plantings the Nature Conservancy has, um, which allows for greater infiltration, water quality, um, expanded wildlife habitat. Um, and we've also been working on some stream bank stabilization and restoration plans. Um, so uh, that's going to be continuing into the future as well. And then lastly, we are supporting Brown County and a few other municipalities in this uh, East River water trail creation um, with um, ecological perspective, uh, technical expertise, and so on. Um, so that was a very high level overview, but thank you so much um, for listening to this presentation. Um, we really appreciate working with Green Bay. Um, Melissa has been a really strong partner. Um, and so we really encourage you to uh, investigate what the collaborative is about. You can go to this website here, East River Collaborative TNC .hub .com. Um, And you can also uh, contact me, uh, my email is on the website there as well. So um, thank you so much and we'll take any questions. That's great. Thank you so much for the presentation. <laughs> Plus, thanks to all three of you for the presentation and all the time and effort that you spent developing some of these uh, these maps and, and recommendations. It's really valuable. Um, questions from our council? Alderac and then we'll see where else. Alderac, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, you're, I, have you kind of watched the different Arbor products projects that have been proposed in regard to the stormwater issues? And I just wondered, um, with all of your um, research, are these projects, um, I mean, they're going to help some of this that you're talking about? I, I can talk yes. to some of that, oh, yeah, because yeah, I've, been, I've been following as much as I can. I didn't go to the seminar meeting, but um, <laughs> the um, so one of the the ARPA recommendations was to create a grant program, I believe, for stormwater, um, and that you know, depending on how it's designed and applied, um, I think could definitely give a boost to um, private development and different areas of the city that could use flood mitigation, you know, to be able to increase their, their, their capacity to weather a storm and to help other areas of the city downstream. Um, there was another proposal, I'm not sure where it's at, with um, flood elevation for homes. I'm looking for Alder it's Galvin, been... yeah. And, um, you know, that wasn't talked about in this, but that, um, I definitely think that's a, good idea but um, it's not up to me and um, you know we've had our challenges with getting FEMA funding we've tried twice and that's typically who you go to for that sort of funding you know when there's been flood flood emergencies and flood damage um, so I, I do think that there is opportunity to utilize funding to to make a really big difference for the you know long-term long-term impacts. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Alder Hutchison. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for the flooding information. Uh, flooding's a, an issue in Green Bay. It's an issue in every uh, area we have. Um, is there a point person or a point location where this presentation can be viewed by constituents who ask us about status of flooding and can we give them this information so they can look at it? Well, 
public information because it's in it was you know it's all in, in everyone's packets and everything. Okay. So you got it the is packet. public information. Um, There's I, not a website or a, a this particular presentation won't be on the East River Collaborative, um, but okay. there's a lot of mapping and that is on the East River Collaborative website. Okay. Um, I would say... Would there be a way just to send the presentation to council separately? Sure. And then people can forward it off to constituents right. if they'd mm -hmm. like to do that? That would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we can just be able to do that easily mm -hmm. to people. We get this a lot, so thanks. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very informative. Um, Melissa, you were talking about FEMA, that you're having issues, you know, kind of uh, funding or what what have you. What is the status of, of the mapping that they may have done for Green Bay? Have they done anything at all that you know of? Oh, the, for the flood, the, the floodplain the, maps? Yeah, the firm maps. The are those out of date or is there those anything? Those are still being updated. They are. Yeah, I don't know if community economic development might have an update on that. I uh, just would say that is the, the $64,000 question. Uh, we do know that they are currently, the federal government is working on them. Uh, they have not committed to a date as to when they will be available as of yet. We're hopeful uh, that it would still be sometime yet this fall, but unfortunately that's entirely in the hands of the federal government when yeah. they will be available. Okay. I think the question I have is that we, we rely on these maps quite heavily, and if we, once we get those, maybe a director could say how, how does that affect some of our programs or some of the things that we have to, we have to work on if we have those updated FEMA maps yep. Director? Uh, just uh, we are certainly there are certainly actually some uh, regulatory requirements we are needed to be following in terms of maintaining uh, our status with with FEMA right now and actually we're starting to do those meetings it's about once every five years there's a, a review process that needs to be done so we're hoping that our current process we're undergoing will actually involve uh, the new the new maps at that point so uh, hopefully again the, the idea would be hopefully yet this fall okay thank you thanks. any other questions all right thanks again really appreciate it so now we are on to a public hearing this is miscellaneous ordinance number 02-22 an ordinance adopting an amendment to the smart growth 2022 comprehensive plan of the city of green bay pertaining to properties located in the 600 block woodside road is there anyone here who'd like to speak to this item anyone here who would like to speak to this item is there anyone here who would like to speak to this item clerk let the record reflect there was no one present to speak to this item on to ordinance of second reading for adoption Alder Scannell makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Discussion on these ordinances? Seeing none, we will use the board. Adopted unanimously. On to the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? 11. 11? 5 and 6, and if I could note an abstention on item 7. 5, 6, and 11, and Alder Johnson notes an abstention on 7? Seven? 7. On item 7? Any other items to be handled separately? Hmm? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The uh, report has been the reports have been approved. Mm -hmm.
with the exception of items 5, 6, and 11. Mayor? Yeah. I'm sorry, I was going to pull two. All right, um, I think we need. They didn't vote on it. Okay, so items 2, 5, 6, and 11 will be handled separately. 2, 5, 6, and 11. And then uh, all the Johnson abstains on item 7. Correct. Items 2, 5, 6, and 11 will be handled separately. All in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items 2, 5, 6, and 11. Item 2 was pulled by Alder Grant. You have the floor. Um, I guess I was just curious if we could get a little bit more clarification on this. When I was looking at the packet, I did see stormwater improvements equaling $4 million, um, but the developers putting $80,000 towards that. So I just wanted to make sure, is that normal that we're putting that much towards this project? motion yes, in particular we yeah we don't necessarily no. No. so we don't have a motion on the item but we're just okay. yeah. yeah director yeah, I guess uh, to be clear although the, the entire amount is not going towards I think the one project that the, the allocation of uh, that is being presented here is, to, is to gonna be a variety of projects that have, have not yet been fully uh, outlined by the Public Works Department so in terms of how much of the, the specific $80,000 contribution one I'd have to go back and, and review that one specifically, but to be clear, that is for multiple projects to be, to be done, not just not just one individual project. Okay. Well, and Director, I'm, I think it would be helpful maybe for new members for you to kind of ex explain TID project plans. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Uh, in in these terms, in this case, um, each time the city creates a uh, a project plan document, uh, it is a requirement by state statute that the city undertake this process. It is a very public, uh, publicly driven process, including uh, public hearings and multiple approval levels, uh, both by uh, the redevelopment authority and city council and the other taxing jurisdictions that are involved. So this is not just involving city funds; these actually involve uh, county, technical college, uh, and, uh, and other local jurisdictions uh, towards that. Um, so essentially, the project plan outlines the 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 intention uh, the intention of what is what the funds will be used for, provides a projection in terms of what sort of increment will be generated by the district, as well as identifies specific projects, both from a development a private development standpoint that are anticipated within the district, as well as the public expenditures by the municipality by the city in this case. So it is intended to be a guiding document that is to show the uh, economic viability as well as the legal. Uh, the legal stance in terms of process in terms of creating this particular this type of district so in this case for this particular item this is an amendment to that particular pro to, to, to that particular project plan uh, so the process is very similar to what would be done in terms of a creation in terms of requiring uh, public hearings notices and, and approval essentially by the RDA the City Council and the other taxing jurisdictions essentially great thanks for that and any other any questions certainly happy to answer Great. appreciate the overview Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Any other questions on item two? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item is adopted, or approved rather, on to item five. Was it pulled by Alder Johnson. Yeah. Would it be in order to, to make a motion to suspend the rules and take items uh, five and six up together? Sure. Alder Johnson makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up items five and six with one roll call vote. That was seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Okay. Can. Take them up. Ma motion to adopt. adopt. Yeah. By Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Alder, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I, the reason I did that is because the, my, my point of inquiry is the same for both of these items. And so uh, I'll just kind of lay some groundwork. I talked with Director Stechschulte, Director Stechschulte about this earlier today. I'll kind of lay out kind of what my question was or concern, and then I'll let uh, either Director Stechschulte or Director Ellen Becker respond to this. Um, I, I had noticed that in uh, the, the Cherry Street uh, TID, there was a $1.2 million allocation for admin expenses over the, I believe it was a 19 year period on this particular TID in the same, in the case of Grandview, it was a $1 million allocation for admin. 
uh, I wanted to have a discussion about that because I wanted to know if that was in alignment with what, while it's an allowable use, I wanted to know if that percentage of withholding is in alignment with what we've done with previous TID plans because, of course, the more you, you gobble up in, in admin, the less you have available for uh, increment and incentive uh, to be used for additional projects or other public infrastructure needs that are part of the TID plan. Um, and so uh, my, you know, if we, if we need the admin allocation, let's have that conversation about what additional value the taxpayers are getting for it. If we don't need it, uh, and it's you know part of the long-term budget process, I, I just kind of want to maybe again have a transparent dialogue around that. So Director Stecksholte, if you could just enlighten me on what you found out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of uh, administrative items, it is, it is as, as you said, Alder, it is an allowable expense under TID law. Uh, essentially, um, it is often used specifically for um, audit fees, uh, filing fees with the Department of Revenue every year, and it has the we do have the ability. City so does have the ability to recover uh, staff and other administrative costs related to uh, administering projects within the district. Um, generally, that is done in this case. Uh, these two project plans were actually done by Ellers, our, our financial consultant, put these together for us. So they have, they generally apply a flat percentage to the overall increment over the life of the district. To use that as a projected uh, administrative line item, and I do believe that has been done in other our other project plans. I believe Director Ellen Becker has some more information on that in a moment. Um, but it is to be clear, it does not automatically allocate the funds. I guess allocate is probably uh, maybe a, a too strong a word. It identifies it as an eligible expenditure and it does provide a projection for cash flow purposes to show that the overall district, if it was spent exactly as is identified in the project plan, whether or not it would be viable or not. So it, because there is a million dollar allocation in there does not necessarily mean that the city will be spending a full million dollars on administrative expenses. And is so, that is that ten percent based on the uh, the development agreements that are proposed for each respective TID? That is generally what we use, try to use ten percent as a standard uh, administrative line item to cover any unanticipated administrative costs, both known and unknown at this point. Okay. So, but I think if Director Ellenbarker may have some additional information on on previous TIDs, if that is the question still, Director. Yes, thank you. Um, so I just if if you look in the general operating budget. Um, there's a line item within our revenue, the 101-250-47-400 um, admin chargebacks. And in the 2022 budget, we had $470,000 that were charged back to the TID. So on an annual basis, it's over $400,000 we charge back to TIDs. And that is, um, that is um, an annual chargeback. And the way we come up with that is we, um, we look at all the active TIDs. In 2021, there were um, 16 active TIDs. Um, that um, there all but the, the, some um, allocations of time was put against that, and that's everything from um, senior staff to assessor's office to development um, office, clerk's time. Um, there's a lot of work you know involved with a TID, and so most of the majority of that chargeback is um, um, is time spent on different um, TID activity. Um, it also goes back to audit fees and some of the additional things that the other the director had just mentioned. And so it is allocated based on projects that were active during that time, um, to, during the year. And so I have an extensive spreadsheet that is um, used to calculate the admin chargebacks. Um, it certainly would be available for you, know, for you to review. Um, so every, in the, historically we've always been charging back TIDs and I would assume every one of the TIDs in the past have, been, you know, have always talked about admin chargebacks. Okay, so, so recognizing as part of the plan, I'm good with that. Uh, Director Sexualty, you mentioned that it doesn't necessarily guarantee that it would be allocated back or charged back. When is that decision made, and, how, and by what by what body is that? That, that is a budget decision made by this body at the end of the okay, day. Okay, so that's kind of one of those line items. I didn't know if that went exclusively through RDA. Uh, no, I mean, well, essentially, in this case, obviously, you're, we're dealing with salaries, which are largely right. on the general fund. So anything made decision there would still need approval by okay. this body so you'd still that would still need to come before this body and the only time uh, that the joint review board would have any type of authorization over this is when the creation of the TID plan is brought forward is that correct that is correct unless there's a future amendment that is needed then we would need their approval in okay. the future but as as of now this would this would essentially create these would create the district subject to their approval in September here okay uh, okay I appreciate that thank you it's all there so we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those two items have been approved. 
On to item 11. Motion there, or? Motion to approve. Motion to approve, Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson. Okay. Second by Alder Scannell, pulled by Alder Weary. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I'm in, in looking at this, I'm, I'm really not a big fan of the, of the change. And um, perhaps someone could explain, you know, from economic development, um, what this means, the reason behind it, and what's the percentage in ho of housing going to be now. So we start with that, thanks. You bet. Director or Um uh, Yep, absolutely, Mayor. Uh, this is essentially, um, while the project description is certainly changing from an affordable, uh, a market rate to an affordable project, um, the actual overall value in the development agreement is remaining the same, so a $21 million. Uh, the actual physical construction of the units themselves are actually remaining uh, identically the same. Uh, it simply is a matter of the providing the units that they're going there. This project has been awarded uh, WIDA tax credits. So in terms of providing, I believe, I'd have to go back and to find, identify the exact uh, item if we have the actual agreement. Let me see here if it actually is in there. Um, so in terms of changing the actual unit count here, let's see. So I would have to double. I'd have to double check Alder with, with the specific agreement language specifically. But it is essentially the, the overall unit count. There's a couple of more units that are being added overall, and a majority of them would be in, I believe, in the 60 to 80 percent uh, AMI range is where that what the actual uh, market range to qualify for the tax credits would be. I'll just to give you a sense for what a one bedroom would be in terms of deem, deeming it affordable. It's 875 dollars a month, gotcha. um, which okay. is Higher than a lot of mortgages in town, probably, but uh, it's neither here nor there, I guess. Yeah. Alder, where are you still on the floor? Yeah, I appreciate it. I think right next door we have also uh, an affordable housing place, right? I'm literally right next door. Okay. Was the goal here really to try and get more market, you know, to try and get more people with disposable income, much more disposable income? It seems like the Schwabenans beating the heck out of us along the river and, and down on on Holmgren Way, they're, they're pounding out all kinds of them. And yet, you know, we had a plan for one and then it fell apart. So we're just kind of, seems like we're going for the scraps. So um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not impressed. I think we can do more. It seems like we're just trying to put it together because it's a project, but I think we can do more with that spot. And uh, I, I'm opposed, so thanks. All right, thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Scannell. Yeah. Uh, in an ideal world, uh, the changes wouldn't have happened both with Monroe on Monroe, uh, that housing project, and uh, with this project. Uh, but it's not a perfect world, and they sort of flip-flopped as far as uh, their strategies of, of uh, low income and market rate. So we're not really changing anything but the location. The housing developments that we've uh, been planning for and approved are still happening, they just changed their locations. Uh, and definitely it'd be more ideal, I think, if, the, if they hadn't changed. But they're not going to happen if they didn't change. They changed for a reason. Either they happen with these changes or they don't happen. With development, you need to be a little flexible. And uh, we need housing. We need all kinds of housing. So is it perfect? No. Is it good? Yes. And I certainly am all for... Uh, putting the pedal to the metal and let's get these things up and let's uh, get the housing that we need in this in this community. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the, the questions, Alder Weary, and, and they're good ones. And I think it helps us kind of understand what what's happening with this project. And maybe a couple more uh, precise answers. Um, this went from originally proposed a 225 unit development to 233 units. Uh, this is a WIDA 4% tax deal. Uh, which means you are at 20% of the units in this development will be market rate. Uh, the others are 60% AMI. Uh, the inquiry that came up about Broadway Lofts, which went in, which is kind of like that buffer property between the homeless shelter and then kind of transitioning into the rail yard area, that was a 9% weeded deal, which means you're at 80% you know, AMI, so much more lower income uh, with those higher subsidy that goes into those units. So uh, with this particular development, you know, I, it, it's, uh, you know, I think the important piece to recognize is from a city of Green Bay perspective and the way that this is structured, nothing has changed for us. 
we're, we're generating the same increment because they guaranteed the minimum assessable value of 21 million. Um, they're, uh, but most importantly, they're, they're able to actually make this project go forward. So this was an opportunity zone funded project. Uh, the contract wasn't complete. Things fizzled out when COVID hit. Uh, and then they lost that, that ability to, to leverage the opportunity zone. So they had to find another way to close that, that capital stack. I agree. I'd love to have market right there for, for different reasons. Um, in, in, but at the end of the day, my, my fear, and, and this isn't a fear like, my gosh, we have to go or, you know, the, the sky's going to fall. This is a legitimate fear that when you look at rising cost of construction right now um, and the way that this TID is stretched out, um, my, my fear is that if we don't approve this, that that site will sit idle for a long, long time. I, I don't think you're going to see a market rate development proposed on that site until things stabilize, which means rates need to come down, construction costs needs to come down. And I think kind of in the worst case scenario, and I don't want to speak for director sexualty, uh, but the worst case scenario is we'd end up, you know, if we don't approve this, you can't get a market rate deal on that site. And now you're going to have to order, you're going to have to order the developer to restore the site and they're going to be up millions of dollars. Uh, and then potentially, you know, some other legal challenges that come down the road. Um, I think for the purposes of Green Bay, it's the total amount of increment that they're creating and that's unchanged, the exterior is unchanged. There's actually been a lot of research that shows um, that when you talk about whether units are subsidized or not, uh, it has less of a direct impact on the neighborhood as the exterior design. And none of that's changed. That's, it's very unusual, in fact, I would say, to have a developer guarantee that minimum and not change anything about the design and preserve that retail corner, uh, which was really critical, which obviously came through the planning uh, commission, I think, back in December, maybe. So, um, again, it's, it's, I'd love to have market rate. I think the reality in, in what the market's doing to us right now is that it's not going to provide for that for a long time. But I would also point out that when you're looking at that geographic circle, you do have some other market rate proposals uh, that hopefully create the income diversification that we really want to see within that area. So not my first choice, uh, but as a backup option, I, I, I'm inclined to accept it because we get the increment that we need. Thank you, Alder. Any other questions or comments on this? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? Nay. The ayes have it, and that item has After been approved. All that? <laughs> on to the report of the Improvement and Services Motion Committee. <laughs> Motion to approve made by Alder Scano, seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Um, Under INS. Yes. No. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. We already dispensed with protection and policy. Protection and policy committee granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Okay. You want to second it? Seconded by Alder Stoyer, and he's no noting an abstention for Abby Steve Pack. Abby Steve Pack. Uh, denied. I abstain from Tara Brunet. And Alder Brunette abstains for Tara Brunette. Any other abstentions or names to be handled separately? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Planning Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately. Two. Any others? Item two will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved, the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Elder Scannell. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Elder Johnson. The item was pulled by Alder Hutchison. Okay, um, I received some uh, communication that uh, there may be some people here that would like to comment on this, so I'd like to open up the floor and make that move movement. Alder Hutchison moves to open the floor, seconded by Alder Scano. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. If you'd like to speak to this item, just approach the podium and state your name and address for us. Mr. 
This is on item two. Not you, Steve. No, you're okay. Mm -hmm. right, so go ahead. The floor is yours. Just state your name and address, okay. and you have three minutes for us. Thank you. My name is Alicia Hammond. I'm with ShopWorks Architecture, 301 West 45th Avenue, Denver, Colorado. Uh, we were invited here by Wise Women Gathering Place, which is a local nonprofit in the area um, looking to build affordable housing, um, hence the rezone. And so we're here. Uh, Blue Line Development is the developer. Um, Wise Women Gathering Place is here as well. And we're happy to answer any questions that you may have um, about the proposal that's in your packet. So thank you. Great. Any questions for our guest? No? Okay. Well, thanks so much for being thank here. You. I appreciate it. I understand a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Comments from our council? Alder Eck? Alder Eck, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, so this is in my district. I, I went, I've kind of been involved in the process since the beginning and so I, I know um, Alder Hutchison was referring to a letter I think we all got. Um, I've gotten more than one letter for the people living in that area with just concerns about it being a three-story building and things like that. Um, I think it's a great project. So, I, But I do want to just say that you know we did get that uh, communication, um, so I just wanted to share that. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. On uh, the report of the Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Oh, sorry. The ayes have it, and that report has been approved. On to item S, report of the Park Committee. Approved. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? Number two. Number two. Any others? Any none others? All in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. The motion has been made to approve by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. I believe we have someone who would like to speak. Motion up the floor. Motion up the floor made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Sir, Sorry, just, I can't. just state your name and address very, for very us. Well. Your name and address. What? Give us your name and address. Steve Seymour, 2544 Heather Road. Okay. Um, and this letter, I don't understand this comment here, which is to deny a request. I'm looking for approval of my Yeah, the, the committee's recommendation was to deny that request, yeah. so that, that's the item before us. And just to remind you, three minutes to speak to our council. Well, 25 years plus when you go to look at a property to buy it, you go look at a property you assume everything's where it should be. And this is something I wanted, put a bid on it, I bought it. 25 years plus later I come and the shed is ready to roll down the hill, the deck is, I've got it supported underneath by things where I don't know when it's gonna roll down the hill. So I try to do the right thing, so I start checking with inspection and stuff to see if I need to do anything to reconstruct this shed. The same exact size, whatever. Well, to find out it's, it's mostly on city property, but I also have letters from both of my neighbors saying they have no problem with me reconstructing. In 25 years plus, there's never been a problem, a complaint. Uh, I have 110 feet from the road to the back to, to where the the lines are for the cutoffs of my property. Um, the average, I have under 110 feet of property there and my shed is beyond that. But some of these properties are 166 feet plus, you know, and how am I to know what I'm buying that I can't reconstruct something that's I'm purchasing in a, in a solid house? Now, it's never caused a problem. There hasn't been any complaints, like I said. Um, 
I could try to move it forward a couple of feet. There's not much room. Um, there's people with 166 feet of depth and they have gazebos that outside that line. And they had 166 feet of depth. And it's never raised a problem or a complaint. They say there's, a, there's no, 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 nothing's being destroyed or uh, nothing's being hurt by these, anything that's in this area. In the 25 years plus I've been there. So I try to do the right thing. I could have just reconstructed a shed and I'm sure when somebody else, that there would be no problem or no issue. Nobody would have complained. My neighbors are all right with it. I have letters from both of them right here. Nobody would have complained. The city would have never known. I could have reconstructed the shed and now I'm, everything's good. You know, it would have went on for more, more years, you know. Um, it's a shame that why should I be penalized because something was overlooked by whatever, inspection, I'm not a, you know. But why should I be punished for a pro property that I keep very nice? I was nominated for a silver trawl award by the Garden Club of Green Bay and I don't even belong to it. I got, they sent me a letter wanting to come visit my house and I let them tour my yard. You know, I keep a nice property, I keep everything nice and clean, abide by the rules. And, and you know, why should I be punished now for a property I bought over 25 years ago that I can't have what I bought and I've cherished for years? You know, why should I be you know, penalized for that? You know, I'll rebuild it, I'll maintain it. It's, it's not hurting anything. Water levels never even got close. I mean, it's, it's at the top of a hill. It's the highest elevation there, and everything goes downhill from there both ways. It's not hurting anybody. There's never been a complaint. My neighbors don't complain. There's other structures. There's other things all over this stuff. You know, unless there's a complaint or a problem, I don't understand why somebody would be against me having my property the way I bought it. That's not my problem. But it is, in my eyes, when I purchased the property, I was all, it was on my property. Mm -hmm. But it basically is. Thank, thank, thank you, sir, for your testimony. Uh, questions for, for our guests? Alder Hutchison? Um, Steve, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you bought this property 25 years ago? Plus. Okay. And that shed was already there? Yes. Okay. Now that shed is located up almost next to your house, right? And you have sloping down you have this creek but where that shed is it's high it's right next to your your pool in the back right. it, okay so it's not in the flood plain or flood way right it's it's high and dry well yeah the, the neighbors three doors down the houses would be washed away if that water ever got high enough okay um if there okay. was ever an issue or a complaint Okay. A legitimate initial complaint. No, I'd be glad to remove it, but in 25 years plus, it hasn't harmed anybody. I'm right. a taxpayer all my life in the city of Green Bay. Why should I be penalized? Yeah, we hear you, sir. For right. Alder Hutchison. Okay. Um, that's it with my questions. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Um, I have would like to make the motion that we treat this property as being grandfathered in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What? We, yep, we have an open floor, so Alder Galvin would like to ask a question. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, you, you said that shed is falling apart? The, the, the whole under structure is rotten. There's, I've got pictures I can show you. I've got like a 10 by 10 beam braced up underneath and holding it up right now, otherwise it would roll down the hill by now. So what you're proposing to do is to build an entirely new shed? No, I'm going to put a... I'm going to put a, just rebuild the deck that was underneath it with better wood. I'm going to use, you know, build a deck that's going to, a platform to set it back on and reconstruct the same size shed. But I'm not going to, I'm not constructing, I'm putting a, a bought and uh, like Rubbermaid type shed. 
It's a metal shed now. Okay. I, I, the I, understructure, I, the understructure, the wood base is all rotted away. I, I understand that. I, I guess my, what I'm wondering is, if you're spending all this money, why not just put a new one on your property? It looks like... There's based, not room on my property. Well, what I'm seeing here, based on the size of the shed here, it looks like it would fit in the corner of your property by your pool. Or would that be too close to your pool? It would be way and too close to other structures. And, and that, that part next to the pool goes like this. It's, it's like a mountain sideways. It slopes this way and it slopes down. My neighbor's yard to that side of my property slopes down about 10 feet. And it slopes back to the hill, to the flat. It's next to the shed. That okay. I have now, All right. I have level land. It comes out where you want to say I could put it. It slopes down like this, and it slopes down like this. I'd have to cut into the side of that hill, dig into it, or put it up on stilts, and it would impair my neighbor's view of the Calder site. Right now, it's it's not impairing their view. They can look out their windows. They're not looking at a shed. The shed's hid behind the pool and the deck. So they're not, and, and, and it would be a major job to try to build a shed in that area. Okay. And it may not fit into the city um, as far as their, uh, the uh, ins inspector. Too close to too many buildings and fences and pools and everything else. There's only so many feet you can construct something in an area. And I pretty much ran out of that. I could probably move it up a couple of feet closer to the pool if that would make everybody happy. All right, no, that's, that's, that's fine. I just asked the question and you gave me a good answer. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for our guests? Hearing none, motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor, made by Elder Stoyer, seconded by Elder Scannell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, the floor is closed. Thanks, thanks for your testimony, sir. Thank you. Uh, so we do have a motion and a second on the floor. I think Elder Hutchison had something in mind. Oh, what's the, oh motion to approve? I'd like to amend the motion uh, to treat this property, this specific location, and grandfather that um, shed in. For I know that is what I think Stephen would like with my communications with him um, versus any other alternative. So I would move to make that amendment. Um, just a question, I think, for Attorney Bungard. Is that an appropriate amendment, or is that a different motion? Or? That's an appropriate amendment. I think, though, my recommendation would be, ultimately, the issue is that it, it's not necessarily the shed, and I'll defer to um, Director Dichide if I'm misstating something, but my understanding is that that parcel or that piece of property that the, sh that the shed sits on is actually parkway or city property. So it's not the structure itself that's a problem, it's the fact that it's on city property. Obviously, with all city property, council has the discretion to be able to sell or dispose of its property as, as it sees fit, but that would be probably the more proper way of addressing the issue, of looking into re redoing the property lines to be able to, for that, shed to continue existing or enter into some sort of lease essentially some sort of um, formalized method of, of conveying the property either through a leasehold or through sale or or some other kind of conveyance so that it continues on in perpetuity because any kind of action by council wouldn't be recorded against the property so if in 10 15 20 years that property is sold that wouldn't attached to the property itself, and then the next owner would be in the same situation. Um, I have a question. Um, the, we've been, I've been talking with Stephen for some time now on this issue, and it came to our understanding that if there were a record that this was grandfathered, mm -hmm. it, this wouldn't be an issue. So, um, if something's grandfathered by a piece of paper or whatever, um, there would not be a need for a lease or purchasing the property. Um, and I'd like to make the motion to treat it as grandfathered, and if we can't do that, then I would withdraw my motion. Like, 
they could make the motion that it's been adversely possessed or something? Or what? So there's actually there's statutes in play that actually prevent um, a person from adversely possessing parkland and city property, so mm -hmm. that wouldn't be a claim. Mm -hmm. um, there's many buildings on uh, city property. Sorry, sir. So the problem again, I think we've had situations where we've we've grandfathered in uses. Um, but that's a use of a person's own property, oh. not necessarily grandfathering a use or an existing structure on city property. So the underlying issue is that it's, it's a structure that's sitting on city park land, property belonging to the city, and there's no record of that parcel being conveyed to the current property owner. So again, there's no methodology of, of being able to record the city's action with the register of deeds so that further down the line when there's a title search that that grandfather action for that particular shed would continue on in perpetuity. I got it. Okay. Okay. I withdraw my motion. Okay. Thanks, Alder. So we've got um, Alder Johnson. Or, yeah, we'll go to Alder Johnson, then Alder Galvin, then Alder Eck. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it, it, it would seem to me, Alder Hutchinson, maybe the, the, the way to approach that would just, uh, you could offer up it, maybe that we do an easement on, on that, and that would be the mechanism that would record it. Um, I don't know, you know, if the city typically does easements with, with private property owners versus utilities. I, I guess I've just never seen that come before this body before, but, um, you know, the one thing I would point out is, I mean, last month when we met, we unanimously adopted this policy, at least it seemed to be unanimous, that we were going to send out notices, you know, to, to anybody who was, was infringing on, on parkland. And so um, if, if we do something here today, I think we need to be prepared to host a lot more of these hearings because they're going to happen. Um, it, it would seem to me that, though, if, if there's this desire, and I, I'm, I'm all about, like, trying to find the the way that we can make this work if it makes sense for the city and we can give back a little bit of that 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 greenway i think it's a really hard thing to figure out here and, right. and i would recommend that maybe a referral back to committee if you want to allow maybe uh director ditch the law department whoever else to look at what does it look like if you sell back some of that land does it hurt us as a city does it not i just think it's going to be impossible to figure out here okay thanks, thanks alder something? just one one second alder hutchison um we've got alder galvin and then alder Ack. Okay in the queue but thank you your honor um and along alder johnson's lines i i would just make a motion to refer this back to staff to uh, make recommendations to committee on how we could convey this property to this gentleman legally so that uh you know i mean if we sell it to him or or whatever um so it it, it can help him out of a spot here helps us out so we're not allowing him to sit on city land um and uh, we'll move forward from there. Second that. Okay. Alder Galvin makes a motion to refer this item back to committee. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. I invite Director Ditchite to weigh in just to talk through how that might play out. Yeah, so if the council were to consider this, I think the appropriate action would be to probably look at the easement like Alder Johnson had recommended. Uh, if we look at selling the property, there'd be a substantial cost to the property owner uh, because we would have to actually hire a surveyor, do a CSM, uh, officially subdivide the property, and typically those expenses uh, fall onto the property owner who's making the request. And that would be substantially more expensive than just putting the shed on his own property. Even if he had to build a retaining wall or do something like that, it'd still be much more expensive to go that route. Uh, so that is a potential option. I do want to point out, uh, like we discussed, uh, you know, a month ago when we brought this policy forward, uh, so we brought an encroachment policy forward. Uh, we have properties like this all over the city. It's going to affect probably each and every one of the alders. There's probably issues in every district. And so as we start implementing this policy, I would imagine that these requests will come forward. And it comes down to when is the appropriate time to accept the request and when isn't. Because I think what you're going to find in almost all of these examples is a lot of these have been here 20 plus years. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue since I started with the city over 20 years ago. 
So I just want to you know, make that point uh, so that you can make an educated decision moving forward here uh, that this will likely not be the only request uh, moving forward if you approve it today. Thank you, Director. So we've got Alder Eck, then Here's Weary, John. Alder Galvin. I can make an amendment to my motion. Uh, when staff comes back with their recommendations and suggestions, also that they uh, give us a comprehensive study of how many properties we're talking about. Um, you know, if we're going to open up Pandora's box here, I, I think we ought to be prepared, like like uh, the director saying. I think Director Ditchett provided that. Can I say something? No, sorry, sir. We could. We'd have to open the floor, Director Ditchett. Uh, so just by looking at air photos, our staff did uh, look at the entire city, all of the park property, and just without doing physical inspections, uh, just based on the air uh, air photo, it appears to be about 150 residences throughout the city that are infringing on the greenways and parklands. Uh, some of them are mowing issues, others are gardens, others are fire pits, wood piles, sheds, playgrounds. Um, there's even concrete work, uh, walkways. There's people who have fenced off large portions of the parkways. Uh, so this is a, a big issue uh, that needs to be addressed, uh, or in my opinion needs to be addressed, but really that's ultimately your call as council members uh, whether you you agree or not okay. let's go to alder eck um so basically i was gonna um ask director ditch to speak i'm on the parks committee um so we we have heard all of the um you know i was part of that conversation and taking into consideration opening pandora's box this was why our committee did recommend this it's very hard to you know to do that considering it you know it has been there a long time so it is hard but I also am concerned about the Pandora's box but I know that um, director Ditchite had shared with us that the um, easement would be one of the options um, in help you know if we were gonna have them leave it there right okay thanks Alder Alder weary thank you mr. mayor um, certainly these aren't fun decisions uh, definitely not now the, the main issue of course really is using city property for free everybody'd love to do that I'd love to live next to a park and push the border of my property out and not have to to pay for the use of that property and that's that's what's here um, we, we will see more of these next year we had a long discussion at Parks Committee about our options and about whether or not uh, the the survey was ready and it'll be a few months yet before those letters go out and once those go out even though they're going to be politely worded at first, there's going to be some, some repercussions and people asking for all kinds of exemptions. And so at some point, you know, we've been kind of lax, I think, for a number of years, for whatever reason, maybe you didn't have the manpower, whatever, um, of not enforcing what's city property and what's not. And, and if you're not on city property, you need to move off of it because you're, you're, you're using that for free and, and that's unfair to everybody else. You, you, that's not your property. So I committee voted to uh, not to approve it um, they can speak for themselves I'm the chairperson but I think that's the right decision um, as hard as that may sound I think it's the right decision and, and I'm gonna stand by that because we did go through all the scenarios you know we can offer to sell it but it's gonna be expensive to redraw all those lines and I mean we can go that route but uh, I think I know I'm fine with just denying it so thanks okay. thanks Alder Alder Stoyer no, sir, the, the, the floor has been closed, so it's, it's really just a discussion for council we members. Floor, yeah. 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 Right right. Uh, Alder At committee, uh, was the gentleman responsive, was interested in buying? I think we'd have to, uh, at the time, I, I, he didn't really say yes or no. Oh, when we mentioned okay. costs, <laughs> he didn't seem right. receptive to it. But um, I, I did want to mention, um, the gentleman, Mr. Seymour, was you know very respectful, and yeah, he did come in for permit, and that's that's excellent. Um, but if he would have built it anyway, we would have caught that when we sent out our letters, and then it might have been a worse problem because now you have a built structure that you have to move. So in some ways, this might be better off for him. So thanks. Right. Thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer, then Alder Hutchison. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, the, several of the alders already kind of spoke to what we were talking about tonight. I, I'm on the committee as well. And I think we had looked at the idea of him purchasing or an easement of some sort, but uh, Director Ditchite said that it would be very cost prohibitive. So 
it's really not worth it to build a, sh a shed that might cost a few, you know, 800 bucks, and, and you might have to pay several thousand. So that, that's one of the issues. Um, I, I was going to ask uh, Attorney Bungert, um, if, if something has been on a property for 25 years, um, is it owned by, is there anything with adverse possession laws that might come into play here? Just a question. Yes, so typically with between private, private landowner adversely possessing another um, landowner's um, property, um, there is a mechanism under the law to be able to make a claim for adverse possession. However, um, there are statutes in place that prohibit that same mechanism from applying when um, possessing uh, city land or municipality owned land. So essentially you cannot adversely possess land that is, that belongs to the city. Okay. I think one of the things that came up and Mr. Seymour was you know, very forward and forthright in talking about maintaining this property for many years. You know, you cut the grass, this and that and the other thing. and. You know, according to Director Ditchite, it, it is a, a conservancy. It's a natural area. So, you, you know, I guess part of it is to leave it as is and just let it do its work. Um, so th it was tough. We talked probably for 45 minutes on this issue, and we tried to look at all the different angles, and I think what it really came down to is the fact that it is on city property. You know, he mentioned that he doesn't have a deep enough lot. Well, <laughs> that, that it is what it is. You know, you have that lot, you have the swimming pool, if you put it in that one corner, there wouldn't be enough room. And he mentioned that there's some other topography issues. It's just a very difficult issue. So like like Director Ditchite said, we have 150 of these coming up, and I don't know if we want to deal with that. You know, I think for the sake of everything, Walter Worry made a good point too, that if, if Mr. Seymour would have put this thing up, we would have probably had to take it down eventually. So it's, it is what it is. So, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Alder, Alder, Alder Hutchison, and then Alder Campbell. You gotta wait. Um, having worked with the uh, Board of Appeals, um, which is different, this is a different limelight here. Um, but when something was on a property for over 20 years, that was treated by myself as something different than someone just did it or they did it five years ago or 10 years ago. And if you bought it 25 years ago and it was there, I think there's gonna be a portion of those 150 things and we're gonna to have to come to grips with this where people have owned and operated a situation for decades. And here the city's saying, uh, that's on city property, you're gonna to have to remove it or do something with it. So. Steve is probably one of maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 people who have this situation. Are we going to treat him just like someone who put in bushes to cut off access from public uh, access who five years ago? Um, I think we should have latitude, and I would respectfully ask for a vote of yes on the on on the position uh, on the question presently to send it back uh, to see if that can be worked out. Um, I understand where the elders are coming from of drawing a hard line, but sometimes a hard line may be bent a little bit just for those who maybe deserve it. I don't know, but I would appreciate a, a yay vote on the uh, motion at this point. Thanks, Alder. Alder Campbell? Well, I'd be the fir fourth person on the parks thing. Like I said, we, we looked at every avenue of everything, and I, I almost felt like it felt, fell into the zoning part, and even if it did go into the purchase of the property, then it would be zoning. Now let's look at all the zoning. Can a little pad of concrete, not wood, support this building on a rezone for what? For what? You know, we're working on creating a policy on the use of the parkways, and we're not even past it yet, and we're already amending situations for it. It, it seems like we're taking two steps forward and one step backwards. So I'm going to support. I mean, we looked at everything. We haven't heard what you use the building for. I guess it doesn't matter. If it's for your lawnmower, maybe you need a smaller lawnmower. I don't know. I don't want to be, you know, that way, but 
they're, you know, we don't really know what it's for. And I've seen the pictures of it. If you'd like to pass them out, I think that would give a little clarity to the situation. Um, I'm going to refer to deny this, whether it comes back to committee or not, because we're going to go through this and we're going to spend. If the ARPA took 47, 47 requests, we got our job cut out for us. And th this is going to be a flip of the coin every single time we go down the street. And, and it's going to come back to the Parks Committee. So we need more people on the Parks Committee, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks, Alder. Any other comments on the motion uh, to refer this item back? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. No. The, the nays appear to have it. That motion is denied. Uh, so the underlying motion is to deny this request. There was a second, or a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? This is All right, seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that motion uh, is approved. So we're on to report of, the report of the Personnel Committee. Motion to approve. Can I say something? No, no sorry. The, the floor has been closed. You don't think we have bigger problems in Green Bay than a shed? It's been there for we almost many years, and army other people, taxpayers, you want to hurt citizens of Green Bay the whole life, and you want to hurt me? And, and other property owners that you buy something because the city screwed up, Sir. the property inspector screwed up, and let somebody build a shed there. It's been there all this time, and I should be penalized. Sir, I, I appreciate your frustration. I really do. Oh, yeah, but sure you do. Well, we've moved on from this item, and so. All right, we're on the report of the personnel committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scano, Second. seconded by Alder Galvin. Any items here to be handled separately? Four. Any others? Item four will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item four. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. The item was pulled by Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to hold this item until our budget time so that we can weigh our wants and needs. At that time, I know we're gonna need some sizable money for our seasonal park salaries and others for next year. So I think we just, my motion's to hold this until budget, thanks. Okay, Alder Weary makes a motion to hold this item um, until our budget meeting. You know when that, what that date is? Oh, the budget meeting, oh. um, our joint personnel? The, meeting the committee meeting or the, That's what, yeah, the, committee the, meeting. the joint committee meeting? November 2nd, or uh, I think we're trying to figure out what date. It's a, th a Thursday? Yes. Thursday, okay. yes. Thursday, November 3rd. Hold this item until November 3rd, which is the meeting, uh, joint meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committees. A motion yes. was made by Alder Weary. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Brunette. Uh, further discussion on that motion from Alder Weary or from others? Let's see. Alder Galvin? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, going through the uh, personnel committee uh, two times on this item, I think that staff did a very good job putting together a proposal and a presentation on what this job, uh, the person in that job, what it's been able to accomplish since its inception. Um, I think uh, they, they did a very good job of explaining why we need this job and why it's necessary. Um, I approve this. When the job was created and we even had an alder here that pointed out to some of our alders why this job was necessary um, and I don't think any job in this city is of a value where we can just hang on leave it open until budget time and if there's not enough money well we get rid of it and, and if there's enough then we keep it um, I, I disagree with that kind of a policy either we need it or we don't and uh, I think we need this job, so I am not in favor of holding it until budget time. We've had an application out there. We have a lot of responses, and I think uh, we should do it justice and uh, move forward with it. Thank you. Thanks, Elder. Um, for those members of council who uh, maybe didn't attend that committee meeting, Chief Falds, could you just kind of run through some of the work that Elder Galvin was referring to? 
Yeah, I can do that. Uh, just one second. Yeah, so the the prior position, you know, really, you know, I think built up the foundation for our DNI um, uh, DNI uh, strategy we're trying to uh, fulfill. So one thing that the position did was they created a, created a strategic plan, which I think if you, it's in the packet. It's about I think like over 10 pages of uh, what we can do and where we can go forward for the next few years to make sure that we have an inclusive, diverse um, population uh, for the city of Green Bay. And I talk about population for employee population. Um, really made a lot of updates to our ERG application process. We have a, we use a Microsoft 365. Uh, this individual created a SharePoint page that provides all the resources for our employees for our d i websites, publications, city policies. Um, the position created inclusive insight cards that would be sent out monthly for employees and supervisors to talk over, um, and also provide. If you could just oh. speak up a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Talking to the mic. Uh, also, the position uh, provided DNI training for our supervisors in 2022. Uh, created a DNI team assessment for city departments. Uh, worked with uh, the HR team to really, you know, create um, the employee engagement survey. Uh, submitted the Human Rights Campaign MEI scorecard, uh, worked with the Mayor's Office on the Mayor's Dialogue Series and um, coordinating that and making sure we had speakers and the, um, setting out the invitations. Uh, worked closely with the HR staff in improving our social media footprint for recruitment. Um, that was one thing we really had to focus on was uh, getting more uh, postings on LinkedIn, and this position really focused on what we can do, kind of read articles on how to make sure we get in front of people in the new kind of new age of recruiting employees. There was an employee um, book group that we had uh, where we went over uh, the five languages of appreciation in the workplace, and the community econo economic development used the appreciation assessment for all their employees, so I thought that was a pretty good outreach um, with the book club. And also as a member of the city's public relations team, um, also attends the City of Green Bay Pride team. So there's been a lot of work with the police department from this position. There was the United Way 20 Week Challenge where um, the position worked at the police department on promoting the 20, 21 Week Challenge and also promoted it with the City of Green Bay employees. And then just attended various DNI trainings and, and topics. Um, CIDMIC, our insurance company, has a DNI task force that um, the position was a part of. Um, CIDMIC really did praise that position, all the accomplishments that we have been achieving at the City of Green Bay, and was a pretty big um, focal, a pretty big part to the CIDMIC DNI group that was just um, newly created over the past year or two, and then attended conferences, you know, across the state. And then, I, if you look externally, uh, the position worked with, um, actually went to a neighborhood association and led a conversation on uh, DEI and biases. Um, with the Neighborhood Association, uh, built relationships with the YWCA, Purveya, and the City of Appleton, worked with New, New North on the DE&I Task Force. Um, so those are some of the things that they accomplished, and this position that we propose is really to continue uh, moving that forward with um, DE&I efforts in a, in internally, and making sure that we're um, able to recruit qualified candidates and make sure that we have a workplace that people feel valued, they feel that there's a sense of belonging, I think when people feel like they're listened to, valued, and recognized, that we're going to improve the, the service that we provide to the community. So that's really what we're looking for with this position. Okay. Thanks, Chief Fultz. Uh, we have Alder Hutchison and then Alder Weary for a second time. Um, I would recommend the Alders look at this packet to see what this position did and what they would have to do. It's called for. Um, if we look at the numbers. It, the City of uh, Green Bay employees is a snapshot of what's going on in our culture. And right now there's between 16 and 20 percent of Green Bay is Latinx. And how many percent employees do we have in Green Bay? Do we have 16? Do we have 10? Do we have 5? Do we have 4? We got 2 percent. We need equity. All the other cultures um, uh, minorities are underrepresented by at least a factor of four. That means if there are four percent in our in our city, there's one percent working for the city of Green Bay. I can't believe we're saying let's just wait with this job. That's that's not recognizing the need that we have in this city. We have to get qualified people here 
And a lot of those qualified people are of different culture and they would help bring equity to this city. Thank Thanks, you. Alder, Alder Weary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I didn't, I didn't know we had a quota system where we were looking to do a quota system. Is that, I don't, I'm pretty sure anybody can apply and we'll take the most qualified. So, uh, Director Falls, do we stop anybody from applying be because they're minority? No, and, and no, we don't okay. have a quota system, but I think- All right, what well, I appreciate it, thank you. What are the salary and benefits uh, for this, this position? What's the budgetary impact? Uh, that was in our memo. It should be on the agenda. I just have to pull that up. Um, uh, I believe it was between. I don't. I don't have it in front of me, but it's pay grade I. I believe it's like fifty-six thousand to sixty-six thousand was about it. And then you add about you know other. It depends if the person has a single insurance or family insurance. It could be anywhere between like. Uh, Ten to twenty-five thousand dollars added for benefits, and then also the uh, taxes that come out of it. Okay, so about sixty-six to a hundred thousand, depending, a bunch of variables. Okay, thank you. Um, and that's really my request here, is to look at the budgetary impact, the sixty-six thousand to a hundred thousand. And when the budget time comes up, we're going to have a lot of priorities. We don't quite know where we are yet. We might have to weigh some things. And a smart business, if you have an open position and budget time's a month or two away, you wait. Then you can make those tough decisions. Maybe it's a great position, maybe it's not, but there's other things that might be more important. That's what this idea is about. Let's weigh it out at that time. It's not gonna kill us to wait two months not to fill this open position. Thanks. Alder, Alder Scannell. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, there, there may be many reasons why a minority may not apply Green Bay. It's not a question of a quota system. It's a question of what we can do as an organization to make whatever social barriers there are, whatever organizational inadvertently there are, to make the, uh, our organization more welcoming. That's what most organizations are doing today. This position is not unique. It's been around, I think, in Appleton for a couple of decades. Um, a city that wants to grow needs to look to its uh, places that it, it hasn't grown in the past. That's where we're gonna grow. And so I think this position is, is not something that I would see, uh, I'd be willing to put on a chopping block. I think it's a, an, impor an important position that we should be uh, filling. And uh, if we got other hard problems come budget time, we deal with those uh, when it comes to budget time, that's, there's always uh, hard decisions to make during budget time. For me, this is not a position that I'm willing to put in that position, put in that position. This is a positional position I'm taking. So uh, I support uh, filling this now. I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna uh, see it get cut off because we got hard decisions to make and we should make those hard decisions on other items not this one. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Hutchison for a second time. Okay. Um, I'm kind of shocked at the cavalier attitude of this. It's like, oh, we can have it or not. I don't think that's actually reality. We need this. Smart companies that grow have this in place. They're smashing these barriers daily. To, to even say that we don't need this thing, we have to look at the budget, to me doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of people who are in... in different cultures who don't come to Green Bay because they're not pulled to it. There aren't advertising signs saying, come to Green Bay. We need that. We need it implicitly now. We need good people working in Green Bay, and they're in all cultures. I know this quota thing. That's an argument that says, okay, if there's two people coming up, but that would be great if we were close to equity. Close. We're not close. We're not even, it, 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 it's a different world. We need to pull in very good people from all cultures, and this position helps do that. It helps across departments do the right thing more often. So I don't, I don't see this cavalier attitude. It's a budget thing. It's a budget thing not to do it. If we don't do this, we're wasting money, we're wasting time, 
and we could get good people here and they'd be working their butts off for the city of Green Bay. And that's what we should be doing as alders. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. So we do have, uh, make sure to push your button, Alder. Alder Burnett. I'll withdraw and then request again. Thank you. Uh, I support the motion. I mean, Alderman Weary's not proposing removing it from the organization or not filling it at all. All he's saying is let's look at it during the budget year. I have over the last year, half year, I have uh, kind of recommended the council that we look at certain positions and determine if we should fill them versus wait. And I think at times for the city to not fill certain positions in order to uh, save money for the taxpayers or to allocate those dollars towards uh, other services that the city has not provided. So for example, 2019 uh, budget, the city's assessed tax rate, the mill rate was $9.16. The next year we jumped to 946, then 972, and now 982. So the city tax rate, the mill rate, has increased 66 cents um, just in three short years. So that, for the average home, say a person owns a home of $200,000, that's $132 more they're paying this year compared to three years. And so we cannot, as a nation, as a country, and as a community, not think that the economic situation that we are facing a very harsh situation not to mention the possibility that properties will be reassessed in a very unfavorable way for some property owners currently and so this allows us to have some flexibility so when we go into the budget year in November again he's just delaying it for a couple months he's saying look at all of our priorities see where this position fits in perhaps not raise taxes this year maybe deliver a different service. We just got done from a uh, park and rex year where many of our parks did not have parkies. There were a lot of young people in our parks that were causing a lot of trouble. Having additional staff in our parks would be a worthy goal. We had park, we had swimming pools that were not open. We had swimming pool hours that were reduced. We had Bay Beach, wonderful rides out there, a way to build community. You go out to Bay Beach and you see this wonderful diverse community that Green Bay is and the fact that some of those rides through no fault of the Parks Department we were not able to staff because we perhaps didn't budget enough last year to pay them more I made a proposal to pay lifeguards more perhaps we need to look at paying them even more this year um, there's other positions that we could consider the humane officer is responding to animal calls perhaps we hire a civilian position so that the police officer who's responding to animal calls can respond to other police calls there are just so many needs of the city government with growing expenses for our tax base I think it does absolutely no harm in delaying this decision for a couple months that's basically what it is it's $31 per hour over full time we're just delaying it for a couple months so I support the motion thank you Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell for a second time. Uh, yeah, I think this position helps us get employees. I think uh, to just see this as we don't have, uh, we're have a sh employee shortage because we're not paying enough, I think is uh, not a false image. There are many reasons why we don't have employees. And I think this is a piece of the puzzle to help us get those employees. So uh, I don't wanna uh, put this off for two months and then make the decision that this is a position we need and we make it. I think we need that position. I can make that decision right now. So uh, as I said, sure, budget time, there's hard decisions to make. There's always hard decisions to make in budget time. I don't think this should be one of them. Uh, it is gonna be, as uh, Alder Hutchinson said, this position will save us money. This position will help us get employees this is a position we need. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I've, I've heard it brought up a couple of times about sort of this, this looming budget uh, crisis that, that's coming up. And uh, I don't know, as the chair of the Finance Committee, I've not had that discussion with anybody. Could uh, Director Ellen Becker, Mayor, somebody maybe comment on that? Do we, do we have a budget, a, a difficult budget season coming up? Yeah, I mean, 
No, <laughs> is the short answer. I mean, it's it's a difficult time of year every cycle to go through a discussion about the the city's budget. Um, Alder Burnett mentioned the the revaluation. That's going to be something that we'll we'll all have to grapple with and decide what the appropriate mill rate is as a result of that that revaluation. But I don't anticipate a more difficult budget year than as is typical. Um, you know, we do have to grapple with the fact that employees are receiving you know wage increases all across the board irrespective mm -hmm. of private public sector so that'll be a, a big point of discussion I would imagine. basically things that happen every year exactly okay um, okay so I just at least wanted to address that because again I just I had I, I wasn't aware uh, of, of that situation so um, you know it was kind of it brought up that smart companies maybe hold certain positions or, or all positions open until the budget season comes and yet I didn't see us talking about the human resources generalist, the plumbing inspector, the park maintenance worker. No offense, Dan, we've got lots of park maintenance workers. Could they just kind of hold that spot open for two more months until budget season? So, I, you know, I just, I, I think I'm getting to the heart, you know, of, of, you know, why this position needs to be delayed. And of course, it's a separate agenda item and it's hand, being handled separately. And I'll be the first to admit when this position as the DEI coordinator was first proposed, I didn't support it because we were in a very challenging budget season. And I said, you know what, I support what they do, the concept, let's wait until the budget's more favorable. And you know what, we're in a more favorable budget. In fact, I shared prior to the meeting, the surplus uh, that, that we had basically last year that was contributed back to uh, to the general fund so i mean again we talk about smart companies what would hold this open you know what else i know smart companies create this position schreiber foods has it associated bank has it i mean there are so many smart companies in our community that have this position and i would also point out that this spot this this position description was rewritten based on feedback from this body right we said you know what some of the roles within the the, the scope of the traditional DEI position, we, we'd like to be focused a little bit more internally. How do we recruit those good candidates? How do we fulfill some of those human resource functions? How do we make sure that our workplace is inclusive as possible? And, and th th these are very necess necessary things within our organization. In fact, I would imagine, Director Faults, that if this position were not approved, would you have a deficiency within your department that you would have to bring back in another capacity? So I, I guess to back up a little bit, um, this position, we had two HR assistants, um, and after kind of looking at some of the uh, HR workflows that's been automated, we took one of the HR assistants and we reclassed that to the DNI coordinator to fill this void of DNI in the workplace. So it wasn't necessarily a, a full position added. We took half a position and kind of uh, um, put it to different uh, responsibilities. So yeah, if this position is not fulfilled, really these, this responsibility falls on, I think the chief of operation falls on HR manager, other generalists, and also when we then would be down a full body from where we were three years ago, we're gonna lose out, I think, just recruitment in general. Now we have one less person in the, in the office just be backup for recruitment or backup for benefits that are being um, administered to employees. So it really, it's, it's a big hit, I think, just to the, the culture of the workplace, but also big edge to just HR responsibilities in general. Okay, thank you. So, so again, and I, I said this at the committee level, I'll say it again, I just, I am fully aware and recognize that government can't fix every problem. We can't. And, and sometimes we, uh, sometimes government has a tendency to exert itself in a position that says, you know, we're the, we're the expert in everything. Tell you what, when it comes to community DEI needs, we are not the expert uh, as government, but we ought to be the expert when we are reflecting internally about the health of our organization, our employees, our morale, our staff, our needs, to make sure that we have the appropriate people in place to properly service all members of our community. Thank you, Alder. Any final comments on this, this motion, which is to hold the item until the joint finance and personnel meeting? Uh, Alder Shore. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> well, with you know, we were talking about budget coming up. Um, for example, off the topic a little bit, but I, one of the issues that we have in the city is traffic, speeding, et cetera. And I'm, this, I'm just taking this topic to kind of describe my, what I'm trying to talk about here. Bond Street is being redone. So now we got people driving on it, they're speeding right now, there's different things going on. And I talked to our traffic engineer about it and he says, well, Mark, he says, we're down 
what eight or eight or ten police officers we need he said in a perfect world we'd have four to six traffic officers on the west side four to six on the east side maybe even more that would take care of a lot of those issues and that's one of the main issues when we campaigned that was one of the number number one issues so this it's not an easy we can't just brush this over very quickly there are going to be many different things that we're talking about and if we're listening to the citizens we should probably be looking at more officers you know I'm just saying I'm not saying that I'm against this position by any means I think it's very important Alder Johnson brings up some good points that many private companies have this in place and to move forward we need to do it uh, Alder Weary says we need to wait two months you know maybe we maybe yes maybe no I don't know if I'm looking at it in terms of all the other positions and things that will come up in two months that we have to look at hard, very hard, including what Alder uh, Burnett said about our parks. Very important. We're losing money because of that. And, you, and Mayor, you said the budget might not be that bad of a year, but you know, I, I expect that there will be issues that we're going to really have to hammer out. So I, I don't know how I feel on this particular issue. I'll let you know in a minute. Sure. Thank you. Well, thanks for your comments, Alder. Um, well, just just a when point. When we vote, when we vote, I'll definitely have to let you know. Just a uh, just a point, a point for council. Uh, Alder Sawyer is talking about a need for more officers, and, and wouldn't dispute that, in any stretch. Um, but those positions are funded. It's a recruitment issue. It's not a it's not a funding issue. Um, so we've got a number of folks in the queue. Um, Hutchison, Galvin, Scannell, Grant. Everybody still. I was going to make this one easier. Okay, Hutchison, Galvin, Grant. No, nope. yes, Galvin, and then Grant. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alder Johnson makes some very good points uh, about private sector, public sector, um, how important this job is. Uh, this job could very well be the person that gets those uh, park staff hired for our pools and our parks. Um, it could be the one that could help us get, fill some of those police positions, some of those fire positions that we so desperately need people for. Um, and, and that's why I'm kind of surprised that a swimming pool employee is more important than this position. Um, I, I, I can't, I can't uh, wrap my mind around that relation that, that we don't need this job, but we need someone at a, at a public pool. We've got three public pools. Do we need three public pools? Maybe we get rid of one, close one down. Uh, save us the trouble of, of hiring the people for that. Um, I, I want to remind the alders here, the ones that were here when we created this position and the ones that weren't here, that uh, it was a, a, a fellow alder, uh, Veronica Corpus Dax, that had to remind some of the um, alders here, remind them that they're white males and that they're talking about they didn't think this position was needed even back then. And she had to point out to them the experiences that she's had in this community and she felt very much so that this, this position was needed. And I, I want to remind people of that. Things haven't changed that much in this community since then. I mean, I think they've gotten better. But as far as it goes, um, like uh, Alder Hutchinson has pointed out, we're still woefully behind um, in trying to uh, recruit people to fill positions from all over uh, our cultures and the spectrums here. So I. I, I think this is just an attempt to try and delete this position is what I think it is. Let's wait two months. Like Alder Johnson said, what about all the other positions we've been filling all along, over all year until all of a sudden, oh, we've got budget problems. We've got to hold this thing open for two more months just to make sure we can make our budget for $60,000 to $100,000. In all the years I've been doing budget, I've never seen sixty dollars to $100,000 be the straw that broke the camel's back in any of our budgets. We've been able to make them work and we may have been able to make them work well. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant. Um, I just have a couple questions for uh, Chief Falds. How many employees are in our HR department currently? Currently, I think we have eight, and then we have one uh, contracted nurse, um, but it's uh, 10 under the budget. Okay. And um, do you know by chance what our HR budget is this year? I don't know what it is this year, but it's usually about $1 million. Okay. I guess I have a couple, you know, we've spoke to before about 
uh, you know, an employee of the who was a, a lifeguard. And it's also my understanding that the application process is not easy. You need to either come down to City Hall or have internet access. I think we have a lot of obstacles that are in the way that go beyond this position that we need to evaluate as a city first. If we want to be equitable, we need to make the application process a lot easier, the paperwork a lot easier. It's. I think we have bigger issues, and I don't know if this is the answer to fix that issue from feedback I've heard. Yeah, and what I can say is I think the Parks Department has done a, a great job. I think this year in the past year of really trying to revamp their application process, especially for seasonal employees. I know we had some meetings where they really – Throw out some, you know, a lot of different ideas, and I think they have made some changes. I don't know them specifically, um, and I don't, I don't think we need to talk about them tonight. But, you know, whether the position, I think the, the intent of the position is to help us improve our recruitment process, and I think whether it's seasonal or full time positions, you know, the, the point of the position is to help streamline and improve that process that we are reaching out to all of the different demographics in our community and across the state or country. So I think that's the intent is to help with that recruitment process. Yeah, and I understand that. I just, if we can recruit all we want, but if they have to come down to the city hall or have internet access to actually apply, that's a problem. So I don't think we're being very fair to our applicants, and I think that's a problem we need to fix first. So just something to think about um, that I want to look into over the next couple months, but just something to think about. Okay. Thank you. And thanks, Alder. Any other comments on this? Use the queue. Uh, Alder Burnett and then... Alder Hutchison. Uh, Director Faults, for the year and a half that a person was in the position, did they do any recruiting, HR recruiting for applicants? So this was the first time ever the city of Green Bay had a DNI coordinator position. The focus from my perspective was to look at our policies, uh, create a DNI strategic plan. So they did not do any recruitment, but what they did was they would have monthly meetings with generalists to talk about how do we reach out to different candidates, what type of recruitment strategies do we want to put forth, what do we want to emphasize in our job postings, and you know that's really what they did with the recruitment aspect. But I think when someone gets their feet underneath them, they could do re routine recruitment here and there, but they're usually going to help us with our recruitment process. Is it in the job description for them to do recruitment? Yes, it says recruitment of a routine nature because okay. I don't want the emphasis to be on recruitment in the sense of actually interviewing, but on just the process that we can reach out to a diverse group of candidates. Yeah, and again, uh, the, the issue is, I know a few alders seem to be throwing some darts at other alders trying to uncover some hidden motives. Perhaps the motive is simply one, finances, and two, that there are other needs that the city government are currently not addressing that could be addressed. That's really what the issue is. The thought that the city budget that we're going through year after year with no problems, that's subjective opinion. When you go from a tax rate of 916 to 982, you talk to a lot of citizens throughout the city that pay more, meanwhile feel like when they go to Colburn Pool, for example, their kid can't go in the swimming pool because we don't have enough staff where perhaps a few extra dollars per hour would have maybe allowed their children to go to the park. And that is not a dig at our, our, our staff at all. They did a wonderful job. The question is, as policymakers, as those who, who set the budget for the city of Green Bay, to have some extra money to um, meet some of the key strategic needs that we hear from our citizens, it's nice to have some flexibility. And I did, for the record, talk several times at different committees committee meetings and council meetings about some positions. Just at this very last meeting I had asked city staff, are there some positions that we can go a little bit of time not to fill? I know we want to assume that everything's gonna be okay, that this country and this community will never face hard times, but the reality is the writing is on the wall with a lot of the inflation and some of the economic uncertainty, surging fuel prices and grocery prices, that it's okay once in a while for a city government to say to their public, we hear you, we're not going to increase taxes, or, or dare I say it, actually decrease taxes and, and really meet the core functions and services that a city government should maintain. Just remember, a year ago during the budget process, we had a forestry uh, department budget where we were basically told as a council, 
due to the emerald ash borer situation, we're not going to be able to trim any trees or do any maintenance uh, unless absolutely critical. We had a situation where we were told that tree stumps may not be ground, brush may not be clear from traffic signs. This council, the previous council, I should say, added a forestry position in the budget the day of the budget meeting to meet that critical need. Don't tie your hands. When we fill a position, it's very hard because we understand the work of the people in the position. We get to know them. We value them to cut a position the day of the budget. I've been there when I was on the county board. It's a horrible feeling to have to do that. We got to hear from the public. I, I appreciate Alder Johnson saying we're going to end the, the, the city the, the, at a year end in a favorable way, but that doesn't mean going into this next budget year that between now and then there's not going to be any drastic changes that are going to be coming to the, the realization. So just hold it. We're not eliminating it from the table of organizations. We're just saying hold it for the budget process. There's nothing wrong with that. The world's not going to burn if we don't fill a position for two months. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Um, Alder Hutchison, I think. So third time speaking, uh, Alder Scannell. Yeah. Uh, I just want to uh, address the points just made that I think the position pointed out is just is to go in reverse, that we're going to cut taxes, that we're going to go down to core uh, services. That's going in reverse. That's a city that's shrinking, not growing. That's a city that's on a death spiral, cutting taxes. Our tax rate is not exorbitant. For the third largest city in the state, cities our size, we are right in the middle. You get what you paid for. You want a city that grows, you invest in it. Sure, the villages around us pay less. They're villages. We're the third largest city. That comp that's just not a fair comparable. Nor does it include the services we provide that they don't and you'd have to pay a fee for. It's just, the, the talk is, this is a position that could end up on the block and go. That's the position that people are saying about holding it. That's your position, that this position is, is expendable. And I totally disagree with that. This is not an expendable position. It is going to solve problems that our alders who want to hold this keep bringing up. I, I don't understand, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It doesn't make sense to me. I think that's why some alders are wondering what, what does make sense. Well, what makes sense is you want to get rid of it. I don't know if that's true or not, and I don't care. I think this is not an expendable position any more than I would want to lop off a, one of our uh, tree trimmers. Uh, and with that, Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thanks, Alder. We have covered a lot of ground here. Um, the motion is to refer this, or to hold this item and over vote, Mayor. until the um, joint committee meeting. A board vote has been requested, and we will use the board. Now we're voting on Alder Weir's motion? Yes. And this is. the joint meeting of finance and personnel on November 3rd, 2020. Oh, um, there's a request to open it's a roll no, call in process. Right. The vote has already started, okay. so please vote. Thank you. This is again to hold to the budget meeting of the joint meeting. That passes seven to five, so this item is held until our joint finance and personnel meeting in November, November 3rd. On to report of the Public, Ar Public Arts Commission. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. TBMP. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. 
The ayes have it, and that report has been approved on to receive and place on file. Motion to receive it and place it on file. Motion by Alder Scannell to receive and place on file the building report for July 2022 and the municipal court report for July 2022. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those reports are received and placed on file. Report of the ethics board. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've been working on this for how many years? And <laughs> when we first brought it forward, uh, and then we discovered there were some issues with it. We we hired a group called CityEthics.org, and, and Carla Miller and her group, and they, they're specialists in this, and they do a great job. They're the ones who we paid 500 bucks, measly sum really, to review and give us all our recommendations. And um, I, I reached out to them again to see if they would be uh, interested in such a thing, if the council wished it, and they would for that same fee review uh, what we've done. And so my motion would be to refer this to the Finance Committee to a re approve a review by cityethics.org for up to $500. Second. Alder Weary makes a motion to refer this item to the Finance Committee um, and um, have that review that he referenced, uh, seconded by Alder Brunette. And if I could, uh, yeah. believe me, I want this done more than anybody. I've been pounding on this for four years, so <laughs> it's, it's finally glad to see it at this point. Uh, but I want to make sure it's done right because last time we did it, we missed some things. And I'm hoping we're closer to where we want it now, but I'd like the experts to look at it and just weigh in. They might say, you did great. Or they might say, you know what, eh, this and this are still problems. So yeah, okay. this one here for them. Thank you, Alder. Before we go to Alder Burnett, um, Attorney Bungert on that motion. Uh, yes, just some general comments. Um, uh, as far as Press the draft button. that's in front of council um, that Under did the take ethics. the recommendations that were given um, by the consultants along with um, our outside council, um, attorney Mike May, um, who was hired to help um, with the drafting of this consult? ordinance um, due to staffing short shortages and a, a, a significant backlog as far as our, our ordinance drafting. Um, so those recommendations that were provided um, by the consultant um, along with any other changes were summarized. Um, so there were two drafts that should be in your packet. One is the draft that came out of the ethics board as, as to what the ethics board approved. And then the other draft um, gives you a section by section summary of all the provisions that have been changed, including notations of what items were um, implemented as a result of the uh, review that the consultant provided. Thanks, Attorney Bungert. Uh, Alder Burnett? Yeah, th uh, thank you. Um, and Alder Weary is correct. That code of conduct for elected officials is what the council just revoked by way of the Protection and Policy Committee. But we have a separate th item, and that is the code of ethics. So if we uh, go forward with this action, I would imagine that the existing code of ethics would still be in effect. Is that correct, um, Attorney Bunker? So the ethics ordinance, as it currently stands, would still be in effect, but the code of conduct yeah. um, has been uh, repealed. Yeah, and, right. and for the council members who haven't been here, that code of conduct, although some thought was a, a good idea, created a lot of issues that we won't get into here, but I support you know, revoking that because it didn't make sense to me. But the code of ethics, one thing I like Alder Weary did for it, he found some historical document that that ethics group or the ethics attorney had suggested. They looked at the code of conduct and then the ethics board and a couple, or the ethics code, and a couple of things that really stuck out to me, and I mean no disrespect to our attorney or the other attorneys that we kind of consulted with, but I, I like things in there about, uh, you may want to consider a procedure for a confidential hotline for the ethics commission and a basic whistleblower protection clause. And I like some independence of our uh, ethics board. We, through the mayor and then the council confer confirms members of the ethics board. If that ethics board is holding this very city government accountable, I like the idea of having a degree of separation so those appointments are perhaps done through a different avenue. So just ideas, I'm not, I'm not tearing apart, I like many of the changes, but there was one thing in there that I kind of caught my eye, Attorney Bungert, uh, regarding to disclosure of candidates and 
people who serve on boards and commissions, someone had mentioned uh, the requirement that they disclose any financial interest over $10,000. Is that a change or is that consistent with what had been in place? Could you um, point out to me what section that is specifically? Uh, well, it's page 11, so it's a 16-page document, so I think it's near the end, you know, obviously 11. I didn't notice any red line where it said that it was a little different, but it somewhat any, any changes from the prior would have been highlighted. So if it, it, it doesn't have a highlighted section, um, my understanding is that is what was currently in place previously. So under, um, again, uh, under other financial holdings, the, the statement shall identify any of the person's other stocks or securities or other financial holdings of any type exceeding $10,000, but excluding personal checking and savings accounts, money market funds, and any funds held in bona fide retirement accounts. To me, today's $2,023 or $2,022, 10000 seems like kind of a, a low amount. I mean, for, for people to have to disclose any interest o over 10000 consider maybe increasing that I don't know just some, some thoughts that stuck out so I support the motion and I won't uh, belabor the point anymore thank you thanks Alder any other comments yeah. uh, Alder Scannell uh, thank you I, I I I don't support it uh, but I'd like to know I mean it seems like it's redundant I mean it's $500 I don't know if it's a hurt to have another review but I mean it sounds like we took staff took what was review what, their review and implemented it so now we're going to send it back to them so they can see that we implemented what they suggested i mean what is there something specific that is a concern uh, or areas that you feel need to be looked at again somehow uh, otherwise it just seems like it's redundant to me i don't quite understand i mean it it's not a big deal in some ways uh, but 500 bucks is 500 bucks i mean our budgets are tight you know, uh, so uh, uh, if, if I can get the sense that we're not being redundant, I, I, I can support it. But otherwise, if we're just doing it as a sort of a precaution or just as a, an idea that it might be a good idea, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to support that. I mean, let, let's do it for a reason. Uh, and I'd like to hear the reasons. Thank you. Is that a question for Alder Weary? Or? Anybody who's got an answer to it, sure. Yeah. Sure. All the way. Pull up, Bianca. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. You got three minutes. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, basically, you know, their recommendations, I don't know if we took them or not. I mean, we have the document, but I can't tell you exactly how it morphed from what we had to what, what is here now. I think the people who gave us the recommendations would be the ones to say, hey, this is what we did, or no, wow, you guys went kind of far afield on a few items here, and you need to, you know, maybe rein it back. I, th I think that's why you have the experts look at to see, here's the document that we came up with, what do you think? Um, I can't tell you if it's exactly what they recommended. They had a lot of recommendations, and it would take me a couple of days probably to sit down and, and look at all of them, and we just got this too. So I, I'd rather have the, the experts look at it. I, I'm not an expert. You might be. Well, Alder Skinnell for a second time. I, I mean, I did look it over, and I didn't see anything that, you know, concerned me at all. And so that's why I'm just wondering if there's something that, you know, is a red flag for you. Otherwise, I, you know, I do feel it, it is kind of redundant. I mean, looking it over, it seems fine. I don't, and to say, well, I mean, I don't care if we implemented all, everything they suggested, or if we implemented more than what they suggested, I mean, we did have other people working on this. Um, it, it's just, uh, I, I'd like to know about something specific that is, uh, would be a benefit to have this group look at it again. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Um, do you want to open the floor, Jesse? Yeah, uh, can I just? Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, Alder Scannell, a couple, just a couple of the four pages of suggestions were to create that independent whistleblower line. If you have a city employee or a board or commission member who sees something that they're like, ah, this doesn't seem right, 
they could call some, if it's about ethics and ethical government, that's an idea. And the other idea is to uh, consider a mechanism to place people on the ethics board. Those are just two that stuck out to me that when I was reviewing, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, that, that I think what we really want is to have the most ethical government possible. And if that means spending a few hundred dollars to get an outside opinion to review the ethics board that we're holding ourselves to, of the ethics policy that we're holding ourselves to, it might be worth looking into. It might not even be $500. She's just referring it back to the Finance Committee. Maybe they'll say we'll do it for 100 because we did it. Who knows? But it's just a possibility. But I'd like to make a motion to open the floor to hear from interested parties. Second. Motion to open the floor made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. State your name and address. Did listen to the ethics committee on the day that they spoke about this action or uh, um, option. I unfortunately didn't get to um, speak. I didn't have the ability to do that. So um, I, I guess I, I have some questions, and I don't know if you can answer my questions, but a couple of the items that actually at the committee level, um, even Attorney May had um, shown surprise that the request to have every commission, every position, the appointed position, um, just have to provide all financial disclosures um, seven days within candidacy for alders and mayors and any elected position. Um, I understood that was a change by the, his reaction. I did not understand that to be something that was already included. I personally think that particular item would preclude people from participating. I myself probably would not choose to run for a position or be appointed to a commission um, based on that particular um, item alone, um, which I think precludes many people from being willing to serve on those commission committees. And um, I, th I think that would be a real shame to um, stop people. I know that it's done at the senator level, the governor level, and things like that. I know it was um, stated that it's a, something the state statute allows for. I'm just not sure that it's something that's common. And I know that when you made all the positions, permanent positions for department heads and things like that via the last council, you surveyed 10 cities. I think that would be very appropriate in something that you're doing here today. Um, the ethics is the only way we can hold the city, city accountable. This is something we have a, um, a way to ha hold you guys accountable. And I think it's a very, very important and not a blase vote. So um, I think seven days within candidacy to show all your assets and have that be part of an election process. I assume these assets are disclosable to the public. That's a question. Are they something the city just holds? It's going to be used against candidates. It's going to be used. Um, I just I question the the validity and the the reason why it's in there. So, just my two cents. Thank you very much. Any questions for our guest? None. All right. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Scan. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. So we've got that um, that motion to refer back or refer to the finance committee for this review that's been requested by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Burnett. Any further discussion on that? Mayor Alder Johnson. Thank you. Just a question, Alder Weary. I presume uh, you're you're looking for the referral so that way finance could take up sort of authorizing where that funding comes from. Um, and that's kind of maybe a point of order that I would inquire about. Can can we do that here, Attorney Bungert? Um, it really should, I, council could, I think the proper way is for it to go to finance so that there can be a discussion as to identifying an appropriate funding source. I haven't had an opportunity to review my budget to see whether that's an expense that law department could bear um, for this particular year or if there was another account that would be more um, appropriate, so. Okay, all right, it, it, yeah, and I'm good with the re referral. I think, you know, we, we, uh, we authorize to have a certain amount uh, to spend on the attorney which did this product for us which which I think is great um, to have a kind of a marginal increase to make sure that this is uh, really a policy that's tight and, and one that's been kind of <laughs> wrought with with issues in the past I think it would be good to have a second opinion for for that amount of investment so I'm good with re referral and, and hopefully we can dispense of this quickly at finance too. Thanks Alder. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <clears throat> Opposed nay.
the ayes have it, and that item has been referred onto committee of the whole. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Uh, Shut them out. 35. Items to be handled separate. Yeah, those will all be referred if this is approved. So if you'd like to handle something separately, let me know. Alder 30, Johnson? Uh, 35. And okay. then if I could have the record reflect an abstention on 27. Okay. An abstention on 27 for Alder Johnson? 39. 39. So we're holding 35 and 39. Any other items to be handled separately? Uh, 40. 40. <laughs> going once. Going twice. All right, items 35, 39, and 40 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items 35, 39, and 40. Motion to refer 35. Alder Johnson makes a motion to refer item 35 Second. and refer to staff. Yeah, and it, just to clarify on that, um, so the, the, the actual motion here was to hold until this meeting. So I'm just making the motion to refer it back to staff so that it can be contemplated with some of the other proposals that were on here. And then I uh, had a conversation with Director Steck Schulte that uh, we could then maybe kind of bundle some things and bring them back as one request for council to deliberate. That's good. So that was uh, that motion was made and was seconded by Alder Scannell. Um, discussion on this item <laughs> on 35. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We're on to item 39. What are your wishes on 39? Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. The item was pulled by. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to be recorded as a no vote. So is this a board vote typically or no? Only if you request it or somebody, okay. somebody does. Uh, no, no. I just want to be recorded as a no. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on 39? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. No. The ayes have it and that item has been approved. Item 40, your wish is there. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Elder Scannell. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Hutchison. Item was pulled by Alder Burnett. Um, I just would uh, like to request a board vote. I would like to vote no on this. Thank you. Okay. Board votes requested. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, we will use the board. Uh, yeah. Alder Weary. Mr. Mayor, I I'm just wanted to hear your clarification. Are you looking to delete that line entirely, or you don't like the cut that was made? I just I, I don't like spending ARPA on that particular program. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we will use the board. The motion to approve is is on the table. So the, the, we have a, a roll call in process right now, so we need to dispense with that. Um, so the motion is to approve. You all get to vote on that. So I vote to approve. So that item is dispensed with. And we are on to. Sorry. On to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion on that? Sure. Seeing none, we will use the board. Are adopted unanimously. On to ordinances first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Take the. We need to pull the um, ordinance for ethics because that oh. is not wasn't approved at the committee level. That one should be dealt separately. Oh, the fourth, fourth item. Mm -hmm. Take up one through three. Motion to suspend the rules for one, two, and number three. Alder Scannell makes a motion to sure. suspend the rules and take up items one, two, and three with one roll call vote. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Motion to hold. Motion to advance. Oh, I'm not right. Motion to advance the uh, resolutions. One, two, three. Motion to advance items one through three made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by... Alder Weary, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Those ordinances are advanced to a second and final reading. So number four would be to hold. I think because the underlying item is going back to finance. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, there we go. A lot going on. Um, because the underlying item is going back to finance, um, I, I, it's hard. We could do a motion to hold, but then if there's any substantive changes to the ordinance, then the draft of the ordinance as presented for first reading will be different. So I think it's probably better to just dispose of it and do a motion to um, to deny or to not advance. I don't know what this is. Um, yeah. It, yeah, we could do that. <laughs> motion to <laughs> Holding first it half. indefinitely is just not going to work. Made okay. by Alder Scannell. <laughs> Seconded by Alder Weary. Any discussion on that referral? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That has been referred. Petitions and communications. Alder Stoyer. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to INS to study with possible action to eliminate the to eliminate the cost of parking for downtown area service employees making fifteen dollars an hour or less in salary. Or just to clarify, I guess, Alder, are you talking about all employees? Well, to it, discuss it. I, I've, we've talked to a couple of folks who are making X amount. They're working downtown. They pay a lot for parking. And just to see if there's something that could be done, maybe some. Yeah, I, was, I guess I was just clarifying. You're not just talking about city employees. You're talking about, no, I'm talking about anybody. General, general okay. Employees. Okay. Um, any other communications, Alder Burnett? Uh, Clerk Jeffries, I submitted three communications actually during the meeting. Are, did, you, did you receive those? Do I have to read them? Yes, I received them. So we're all good. All right, thank you. Any others? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to refer. Motion to refer made by Alder Stevens. Alder Scandal's protesting. Anybody for a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Items referred. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn made by Elder Scannell. Seconded by Elder Campbell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks.